go for the first time. And the staff has gotten uh, research on them. Mr. Kokyam Yan Chan, how old are you? Uh, I'm 35 years old, sir. 35 years old? Yes, sir. When were you born? I was born in Hong Kong. Marunong ba magsalita ng Tagalog o ng lingwahe ng Pilipino? Marunong po. Uh, uh, sige, sabi mo sa akin sa Pilipino kung ano yung uh, nalalaman mo dito sa ating bansa. Na bakit gusto mo maging Pilipino? Um, actually, sir, um, my family, yung, dumating po kami dito noong um, 1989. I was two years old. Um, and then dito po ako nag-aral um, sa Chiang Kai-shek po. And then college sa um, St. Benil. Ngayon, um, nag, uh, ngayon, nagdito po ako po nag-negosyo at ang asawa ko po ay um, Pilipino po. Tapos may tatlong anak po kami. Nandito na rin. So, gusto ko po sana dito na rin talaga mamalagi for long term dito para magnegosyo mag at palakihin yung mga bata, sir. Saan nag-aaral yung mga anak mo? Um, sa MGC po yung dalawa. Yung anad, the last one, the latest one is a newborn. So, wala pa po. Pero yung dalawa po sa Makati Gospel. Makati Gospel. Huh? BGC po. BGC po. Makati Gospel Church. Ah, Gospel Church. Um, good. Uh, And you have a citizenship na United Kingdom dahil sa Hong Kong, right? Opo, sir. At saka Ireland? Um, yes, um, British citizen because it's um, a colony of um, Britain before, Hong Kong, and a Hong Kong citizen po. So, pinag-isa mo yung UK kasama sila doon sa Commonwealth? Ang araw, yes. pero ngayon eh, ang uh, Irish, Irish is, uh, have their own country now, right? Ireland? Opo, sir. Di ba dalawa yan? Actually, um, UK passport po yung um, citizenship ko, United Kingdom, um, and um, Hong Kong po. Oh, so wala kang passport sa Ireland? Wala po. Remember, you're under oath, no? Uh, uh, and uh, because this is a citizenship issue, uh, I will put you under oath. Uh, Mr. Mortel? Mr. Mortel, the concept. Mr. Mortel. Mr. Mortel. Mr. Chairman. Will you please pay attention and stop talking to your girlfriend? Uh, on the sir, I'm trying to contact Mr. Rinucci, sir. Uh, I want uh, the oath administered to our uh, applicants. Uh, please raise your right hand and uh, swear before uh, uh, Mr. Mortel. Go ahead, Mr. Mortel. Administer the oath. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Please swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth before this committee hearing. Yes, Mr. Chair. Let the record say that the witness has uh, signified that he has uh, uh, done so. And uh, I must I must confess I'm remiss. I have to call this to order. I will repeat the sequence. This meeting is now called to order. Uh, take note of the time. And uh, uh, we have just administered the oath. And uh, with the permission of Senator Subiri, we will just consider that as part of the meeting. All right. And the questions previously. Uh, does the Mr. Mortel take note of that? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I've asked him previous questions. And how long have you been married, Mr. Kwok? I'm um, sir, around eight years po. Eight years, all right. And what do they call you for as a nickname? Ano pa ano mo? Uh, Ian po, sir. Ian. Ian, Ian. all right. Uh, and you live where? Um, dito po sa Rockwell. Right. Um, you live your parents or by yourself? I'm by myself po, sir. And where are your parents? My parents is also here. That they live in um, thirteen twenty two Golden Empire, but sometimes they also stay here in Rockwell. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, they don't go to Hong Kong anymore, or from time to time you visit Hong Kong as a family. Um, actually, my uh, mother um visit China time to time because she have a business there, and then my father is a uh, full time here because he have a business here in the Philippines already, sir. And what is your business here, sir? 
Um, I have a um, shipping line, sir, in a um, in a Arastre services. And what is the name of your shipping line? Um, Seaborn Shipping, po, sir. Seaborn Shipping. Sorry. Seaborn Shipping. How do you spell that? Um, S E A B O R. Seaborn. Seaborn. Yes, sir. Seaborn. Shipping. And you own and you own bottoms. And. Sir? You own bottoms or ships? Yes, sir. Yes. How many? Um, right now, around eight, sir. Eight. And uh, what do they do? Inter-island? Yes, sir. Inter-island, sir. And what are the their routes? Sir? What are their routes, sir? Routes. Ruta. Um, we have routes going to um, Butuan. We have going to um, Cagayan, Iloilo. So we probably have, have around eight locations, sir, our routes. Can you tell me them one by one, please? Um, I think um, um, Iligan, um, Butuan, Dumaguete. Um, I think we have um, going also to um, Iloilo. Um, and then um, the others, sir, I'm not very familiar. Well, how, can, how can you not be familiar? That's your shipping line. Actually, sir, because um, actually we have a man. Uh, I have a managing partner. He's more um hands on on that um project, sir. And he's Chinese too. Um, he's a Filipino. My um elementary classmate, sir. He's a Filipino. A Filipino was, Chinese. Uh, where, what in that uh, school? What you attended? The Christian school? No, the Chiang Kai Shek, sir. Chiang Kai Shek. Oh, so yes. you were together in Chiang Kai Shek, and he's a Filipino. I attended Chiang Kai Shek. Uh, Filipino Chinese, sir. All right. Okay. What do you speak in China? What dialect? Hokkien? Mandarin? Sir, actually, I speak Mandarin. I speak Fukien also. And then I speak Cantonese as well. But not oh, very, very fluent well. in Cantonese. And what do you speak at home? Um, more Fukien and Mandarin. And you do not speak Filipino? Um, at my own house, Tagalog, po, sir. Tagalog, huh? Of sir. Okay. All right. Uh, now, you own shipping there. How much? How much is your investment in that? Is that, is that a sole proprietorship or a corporation? Um, it's a corporation, sir. And uh, excuse me, sir. Um, I cannot. Fifty percent, lang po pwede. Hello, sir. All right. Uh, who are your partners, sir? Um, Oliver um, and um, Jardin, Joseph. And they're Chinese too? Um, Filipino Chinese, po, sir. Are they Filipino citizens? Yes, sir. Uh, One of our partners, I know before he ran as a mayor in um, Catanduanes. All right. So, uh, okay. Uh, your corporation has to be owned sixty percent by Filipinos and forty percent by foreigners. So you're still a foreigner. Yes. Yes, sir. What is your uh, What is your division of ownership there? Um, around I think twelve point five, sir. Twelve point five percent. Ayo, sayo. Opo, sir. Twelve point five. So in this a negotiation, um, you're just, uh, investor. Ah, yes, sir. Opo, sir. Presal mo sa para ako may um, actually, sir, um, binuo kasi namin yun um, when we are about eight years ago, sir. Nag-usap kami. So, Oliver, he's the operation head. His family is into shipping line talaga. So, he said he wants to get 50%. So, kami naman ni Joseph, um, me and my partner, 25, and then Joseph, 25. So, it ended up for 100%, sir. Oliver is 50%. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Has twenty five percent. Um, again, sir. Oliver. Joseph. Has, Oliver is fifty percent, and your other partner Joseph has. Twenty um thirty five percent, sir. And then me, another partner has another twenty um shared for a twenty five percent. That's what around twenty um twelve point five percent. Sure, I would love to check that, huh? Yes, sir. They both, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, and is the company doing well? Okay naman, yes, sir. Um, 
actually um medyo humina kasi sa pandemic sir mm. but uh continuous naman siya sir up to today pero cargo essentially cargo yes sir cargo po may passenger traffic ah wala po wala pong passenger sir oh so cargo but hindi na syempre kailangan mag supply kayo ng cargo di ba yes sir pero um there's a lot of um nagka problema nung um nung so, mga then, Asians, um, yung mga production sa China, yung mga materials, a lot of delays. And then because of this Odette typhoon, we have one vessel na tinamaan, so nabutas siya, sir. Nabutas yung hall niya. So right now, we're under inaayos, nire-repair yung isa. And your goods come from China? Yung ang pinapadala niyo sa itatlo ka lugar ng basa? Actually, sir, yung sa amin, kasi we cater local markets. So um, a lot of our um, client is coming from let's say Coca-Cola, Nickel Asia, um, different local uh, market po yung kinikater namin kasi local lang ano namin. Ano mining? Ano may ba nay mining? Nickel Asia. Um, actually, may mga, ah, yes, um, may may mga 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 equipment sila Nickel Asia na pinapadala sa amin sa butuan, Surigao for their Surigao plant I think. So dumadaan po sa local ano natin. Is your wife living with you right now? Yes sir. Apo. So somebody told me you're living alone. Hmm? No, sir. Actually, she's beside me. She's beside me, sir. Asawa mo, para sigurado, nakatira ka sa kanya, o baka may kasama kang iba? Sige, sir. Nandito po siya. Nandito siya. O, sige. Okay, thank you. Sinisiguro ko lang yung interest ng asawa mo is safe. Matawa si Mixit. Si Mixit. All right. Now, the name of your wife is Steffi Blair Ko Ong Chan. Chinese nga siya, pero Pilipino na siya. Ganun ba? Yes, sir. I think she's a third generation Chinese. She was born in Jensan, General Santos po. So, yung grandfather pa niya. So, I think even her parents were born. Third generation Pilipino na siya. Ganun ba? Opo. O Chinese. Nag-intermary ba yung asawa ni Steffi sa mga Pilipino? Sir? Nag-intermarry ba sila? Um, actually, kasi yung dad niya is a Filipino. Naturalized, naturalized um, Filipino. Um, right. Chinese naturalized. Uh, uh, opo. So, sa kaya kaya sa Soler? Casino? Actually, yun yung part, yeah, ballroom um, sa Soler po. Kasi uh, we're um, okay, Christian kinasal. wedding. Sir. Okay, yes, sir. Christian Sino wedding. Kinasal, Pastor David. Pastor Dave. And what is your religion, if I may ask? Born again, sir. Christian. Born again. Hindi kayo Buddhist? Hindi po. Si Senator Suburi, Buddhist siya. Paminsan-minsan, pagkakaharap ang Buddhist, Buddhist siya. All right? All right. Looking good so far. You don't have any derogatory record. Wala po, sir. Nagmamaneo over speeding or driving drug. Meron kang drug record? Wala, walang drug record, sir. Walang other. How did you enjoy St. Benil? Yes, sir. How did you enjoy St. Benil? It's good, sir. Actually, I graduated there for my course of export management, sir. How many courses ka doon? Export management? Yes, sir. Business course. Business course. Um, business um, major in export management, sir. All right. Uh, and uh, because of that, uh, you've been doing business since then. And uh, I understand that you are, uh, are you a member? Uh, do, do, do you have personal properties and uh, other business interests apart from shipping? Um, we have a mega lifter, yung um, ano siya, Aras Tree Business. Ano yung Bolton? Uh, it's a Aras, Aras Tree Business, sir. Aras Tree. So, yes. integrated, ano? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, meron din po, sir, sa ano. Um, actually, I'm working right now on a, a board member of a listed, um, Mark Venture, Benguet Mining. You're a member of Benguet Mining Corporation? Opo, sir. So, kasosyo mo sila, sila Speaker Romualdez, si Majority Floor Leader Romualdez? Yes, sir. Opo, sir. That's a Romualdez firm. Yes, sir. 
actually uh, um, part of the board sir and um actually the board. Uh, operating good. as well operation as well sir yeah they are very young you're already in the board of directors of a major company benget yes sir right because and, um, we started a lot in a mining we have a lot of experience when it comes to mining before so we i joined the group of boss martin mm -hmm. yes, sir. and uh, you mining mo talaga mining hindi yung dutch mine dutch mine dutch mine Mining talaga, sir. We're shipping out. Yeah. Um, Having mining. Ake nyan, ake nyan. All right. Uh, how long have you been sitting in the board of uh, Benga? Hello? Did we lose you? Ian, did we lose you? I'm oh, sorry, sir. Um, I think I got lost um, at the middle. Oh, so you're actually, found again. Yeah. Amazing Grace. You once were lost and now you're found. <laughs> yes, uh, sir. Yes, sir. I once was lost, but now I'm found, right? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> That's my favorite song. Same after my mother, Amelia Gordon, Amazing Grace, AG. So I call my mother, all right? Uh, so... Uh, you are in Benguet. You also operate. Uh, pa nickel mining. Is that are you part of the board there as well, or is that operated by Niban Nickel Mining, Kalasamora? Yeah? Um, actually, that's Nickel Asia, sir. But um, we are Asia. part of the Nickel Mining. We have our also a company in Surigao, which um is a listed Mark Venture, Mark Venture Mining Corporation. Wala kayong pollution doon. Um, we try our best, boss, kasi hindi talaga maiwasan may kunti, pero we try our best to be part of the yes, DNR. Oh, no. Yes, ma 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 there is a pollution going on down there right now. Uh, ng, uh, are you aware of that? Naging uh, cold orange and too big? I think that one's in Davao, sir. Yes. Uh, sir. You don't have something like that, do you? Um, No, sir. Your company uh, has never been sued for that. Um, we're compliant, the man, sir. Yes, sir. You're compliant. Yes, sir. Answer, sir. Uh, and uh, what other companies uh, are you in? Um, I have. We have an equipment um business also. I in I invest in an equipment business, but right now it's not doing really well, sir. What kind For of equipment? Sir, mga ano siya, mga dump truck, mga tractor head. Oh really? Yes, Second sir. Brand new or second hand? Brand new, sir. Where is the offices of that? What do you call that company? Um, Zenith System and Heavy Equipment, I think, sir. Yeah. It doesn't seem to show here. Venice? Zenith. Zenith, sir. Zenith. In Venice in Italy? Yeah, Z-E-N-I-T-H. Zenith. Oh, Zenith. Zenith. Yes, sir. Zenith. Sorry, my pronunciation is wrong. Maybe yours is correct. Zenith. I pronounce it Zini. Uh, so that's your uh, one. And where is that? What, what kind of trucks do you carry? Mga Chinese? Yes, sir. Ano mga photon? Um, Sino trucks, sir. Howo. Sino trucks. And where are they based in China? Um, in Jinan. The, the factory is in Jinan. Jinan. Uh, Jinan is south of China? I'm not very familiar, sir. Uh, do you know your geography? Not really well, sir, sa China. Sa China. <laughs> Not really well. I, I rarely go there, sir. I rarely, um, probably. Where have you been to China right now? Paano yan? Pagka nagkagulo tayo sa China. Kanino ka sa kampi? Of course, sa Philippines, sir. Talaga, ha? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we want you to, uh, if we're going to be a Filipino, you really have to love the Philippines. Pareha tayo. Tatay ko, Amerikano, he chose to be a Filipino, but he died a Filipino. He was assassinated, no? Uh, and all of us, uh, none of us are uh, went to America, all right? I always wonder uh, what you think about China being very powerful, uh, especially now, uh, na sila another aircraft carrier. Are you aware of that? Um, no, sir. Huh? No, sir. They follow Chinese affairs. Na, uh, they're now uh, moving up. Uh, yung kanilang uh, belt them na... Uh, Ang tawag doon? Belt, ano? Ayan, ano? Di mo alam yung belt and uh, ano yan? Ano yan? Belt, silk and Belt Road. 
na 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 yung um i um Silk Road yung um, for export their their yeah, yeah 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 they're connecting the whole one di ba and what do you think of that um actually sir I think it's more on the the Asia view di ba they're reviving the Silk Road the Silk Trade before Silk Road yes I think that's you know do you know the history of China sir not really well but um I watch about I watch some China, movies sir. Kingdom. yes sir. You, uh, your parents talk to you about the Middle Kingdom? No, sir. Ah? Huh? No, sir. Kung araw, lahat ng basa, eh, ang tingin ng China, eh, tributary nila, kailangan pumunta sa China para magkautaw? Uh, I don't know, sir. I don't know that, sir. You don't know that? Uh -huh. What about the Philippines? What do you know about our history? Um, mas marami, sir. I'm more on the Philippines. Who is your people in the Philippines? The who's? Who is your number one hero in the Philippines? Mick Zubiri? Jose Rizal? Jose Rizal. Oh. Zubiri Sal. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jose Rizal. Why, why do you think so, so, uh, Mr. Rizal is a hero? He's part Chinese. Okay. He, he died know? for the country by protecting the country. What definition of to die for your country is a heroic? I think so, sir, yeah. Oh, really? If you die for your country, oh, yes. Everybody can die for a country and fight the right of the Filipino. Or is it uh, like Lapu Lapu? Do you think he's a hero? Mm, yes, sir. Why? Because he fight the people who want to colonize us. Really? Did we have a country at that time? Was there a Philippines at that time? Or was there just a kingdom of uh, Lapu-Lapu? I think it was Mactan, right? Yes, in Mactan. And was was, uh, what Wait. happened? Why did they fight with Magellan? For the, I think for the um, because um, Magellan is colonizing us, I think. No, Magellan invaded him, right? Yeah. Sinulusulan ng isang kapwa natin na Katribo natin. Hindi mm -hmm. sumusunod sila po lapo. Mm -hmm. Sumamba. Eh, medyo mayabang yung uh, kamag-anak ko ba yun? Eh? Sa Portuguese yun, no? Portuguese, hindi pala Kastila, no? Uh, hindi ko kamag-anak. Basco ako, boss. Basco. Basco, Basco. Basco di gama ka. <laughs> Basco di goma. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, do you know the eight provinces that uh, fought against Spain originally? Nako, di ba tinuro sa Saint Benil niyan? Parang, um, sa Chiang Kai, sir. Um, I think... Sa Chiang Kai, sir, tinuro. Oh, sige, okay. The eight stars, parang Cavite, um, Batangas. May, may term yan, eh. Kaya mo yan, sige. Uh, um, I haven't checked it, sir, for, um, for a long time, but uh, I think the eight rays of the sun. And, All right. What do you think of Andres Bonifacio? Is he a hero or a heel? Andres Bonifacio? Yes. A hero, sir. Why? He fight, I think, with the... That time is... I don't know. What do you think of him when he went to uh, when he went to join Rinaldo in Cavite and then he lost the elections in Cavite? Natalo siyang presidente, tumawag po siyang vice-presidente, tumawag po siyang secretary, talo. Finally, Rinaldo siya nang uh, nagkakamali, secretary of the interior, pero hindi rin siya binigyan ng puesto. Tapos uh, umalis siya, nagkaroon sa balutan siya. Oh, plaka niya gagawa ng isa pang uh, another front, another revolution. Do you think that was right? No, sir. That is if you believe what I'm saying. Yes, sir. If I yeah, if that's a history, I think that's not right, sir. Do you know the Chiang Kai Shek history? Yes, sir. But I I haven't refreshed it for so long. Cause um when we are after graduation for uh, in college for like thirteen years, boss must focus kami sa mga ano sa mga business and um how to. I'm serious about this because. As a person who aspires for the Philippines uh, citizenship, he should know yes. the history. 
Because if we don't know yes. your past, you cannot be proud of your country. Correct, sir. I agree, sir. So I will um, be proud of this country. Sir? What is there to be proud of this country? To be a Filipino, sir. Oh, yeah. You see. You see. You see. What is there to be proud of about being a Filipino? We were number one in Asia, second only to Japan after the war. Nine. Ano, ano question on Filipino yan? Ang Pilipinas. Um, in terms of ranking, sir, I'm not very sure, but um, because, but sir, you know that you want to be a Filipino, but you don't know the ranking. Not, not in the details, sir. Oh, give me an idea. What you know? Um, surely, um, when I see questions huh, that will relate to my hard decision to make you a Filipino. Yes, sir. Um, so, uh, um, basically, sir, um, in the here in the Philippines, my um, personal experience is um, actually I found out um, Philippines, um, they have a very um, strong family ties. Mm -hmm. um, they love their parents, they love their um, friends, they're very accommodating. Until until somebody dies and the children fight for the inheritance. Is that be correct? Mm, it depends, sir. But, they um, love their parents until uh, somebody dies and they have to fight for the inheritance. You know what Actually, no, sir, because I Does think... Do you have uh, any Chinese tradition in primogeniture? Are you familiar with primogeniture? Are you the eldest son? Um, no, sir. I'm the number two. I have a sister oh. and a younger sister. Yes, sir. All right. So you have no problems with your firstborn? No, no problem, sir. Uh, he's a, he's a, he, your brother, uh, is he a brother or a sister? Sister, sir. Sister. Sister. I don't know. No problem. They're primogeniture. They're lucky, right? So they're not going to correct? Actually, sir, I don't think that way because our parents teach us na equal talaga. Like, if you're doing good and then your your sister is not doing well, you, you help her. And same as my um, younger sister, it's the same. That we equally, it's everything equal. The, the, be, the best thing is you you guys need to be as one. Yung kasi yung more on um, tinuro talaga sa amin, sir. You know, I'm impressed with you because you're 30... Four years old? 34, 35? Turning 35, sir. Yes, sir. 30, 35. And yet, uh, you're running shipping, you're running trucking, and uh, equipment sales, right? Yes, sir. You're selling equipment and you're renting it. What other things do you, or, or do you run? Um, we have, um, we invested um warehouse, sir, but it's a, it's a very um, recent investment, sir, warehousing. So now warehouse now? Um, actually, we just bought San Simon, sir. Pampanga? Pampanga, sir. Yes, sir. Pampanga. And what are you going to use it for? Um, we want um, to use it for... Um, because we have... Uh, I invested a tire business and a battery business. But it's battery a very new... It's, it was established during pandemic, sir. Because we need to look for some alternative for um, business. Because it's really... The, the, the other businesses is not really doing that well. So we're looking into other um, opportunity. So it, the business was established during pandemic. It is very early, sir. Probably not even a year. And we are looking. Um, we just acquired a warehouse, but it's since um, binigyan kami ng good um, deal installment, like forty months. So we're. Um, bakit bakit ka magaling na negosyante? Tinuro ka ba ng tatay mo? O pina utang ka ba ng tatay mo para magkaroon ka ng negosyo? Actually, no. Actually, we were... Uh, my family business, sir, is actually there into real estate in um, China. My, my mother, especially. China? Yes, sir. Um, so, yun. Yung parents ko, but um, she's retiring na rin um, because of... Um, the last project has been sold out. Um, so, um, when I was young, they, she sent me, like, 13, 14 years old to China to magbenta ng bahay namin, maging parang agent. So... No salary, nothing. Pero sinasabi lang, you need to train. You need to know what you're 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 doing. So we were been trained very young, sir, like 13, 14. Even you cannot sell even one house because that time we don't know anyone. But he want to know how to do marketing. How do you talk? How do you? Oh, ang sinasal mo. You are from the school of hard knocks. Inadto mo sa kasal balay wala yon sa Saint Benedict. Ang naituro siya na magulang mo eh. Uh, magsabawa ng mga higi, pag-aralan mo yung negosyo, maanap ka ng markado, at uh, one. Palagay mo, bakit yung mga kababayan natin Pilipino hindi ganyan sa inyo? Mga Chinese, ang bibilis yung magnegosyo eh. Mm, 
Actually, Actually I think... Si Spiri, si, si uh, Mr. Uh, yung mayari ng SM, nagsimula sa patero eh. Ititinda ng sapatos. Shumart, di ba? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, bakit ang bilis nila? Tinuturo ba sa inyo mga, mga batang Chinese yan na sa pamilya nyo na tala na o oh, sinasabi sa inyo na dito tayo sa isang bansa na foreign kailangan uh, kumita kayo ng pera kundi maapi kayo dito yung matinuturo sa inyo? Actually, I think the foundation that um, tinuro sa amin talaga is talagang uh, magsikap wag aasa sa mana even though may pera yung parents mo it's not your money you need to do it by your own and then also focus on sa mga kids um i think um uh, a mentality ng parents ko kasi they're saying na uh, more on um we can only give you education you no know? and then down the road it's up to you because the business is up and down but aantayin mo tong man sabi din naman ng mga magulang ng pilipino yan eh nabibigyan lang namin sa edukasyon eh pero pagdating na ng graduate wala na eh natatrabaho na lang sa mga uh, katulad niyo may mga firms kayo pero bihira ang nagiging entrepreneur although nagbabago na lang konti ngayon. I wish magbabago ng katulad ninyo. Yes, sir. Ano ang mga values ng Chinese na nakikita mo dapat ituro mo sa mga kaibigan mong Pilipino? Actually, marami. Uh, almost ma, all my chip of staff na nagtutulong sa akin are all Filipino. And I think right now, they're, um, tinuturuan ko siya talaga, you need to save. Pag kumita ka sampo, you try to spend one on kung may bisyo ka, piso, let's say luxury item, but The rest nine, kung pwede, save for the rainy days, investment, and then hard work, at saka most important, yung pangalan mo, yung pagkatao. So, so alam mo, marami nanonood dito, kaya na, na, nagpapaturo ko sa'yo. Di ba, ta, ibig sabihin yan eh, yung pinagsabi ko palagi sa mga kababayan natin, nung ako'y mayroon ng ulong kapot hanggang ngayon, work, save, invest, prosper. Yes. And of course, very important yung name mo. Yung, yun talaga yung sobrang importante. Na if you commit, You do it. If you cannot do it, don't commit. Ganun talaga. Kung sisirahin ang pangalan mo. Yeah, yeah. Very important, sir. Yeah. Uh, katulad ng mga kaibigan natin na sa family. Yes, sir. <laughs> ah? Ano? Eh, nagsasamantala. Uh, ano ang uh, why kayo at why kaong? The Chinese. Sir? Why kayo at why kaong? Oh, walang walang trabaho, walang kain. <laughs> Kasi yung misis ko medyo minsan bisaya eh. So, bisaya, oh. Like, uh, why ka, kayod, why kaon, walang kain. Oh. Sa Chinese, di ba? Bochoy ka ang botan siya. Oh, yes. Sabi mo nga? Bochoy ka ang botan siya. Oh, tama. Kasi pag nagkamali, iba na ibig sabihin, di ba? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright. Okay, sige. And, uh, yeah. What do you want? I'm sorry, I, I don't go by your... Mr. Chair? Go ahead, Mitch. May I ask uh, just uh, one question from the from the uh, applicant? Yes, because my staff is teaching me, forcing me to ask questions that I don't agree with. It. Go ahead, Mitch, go ahead. Thank you, thank you. While you're uh, continuing your train of thought, I just want to... My staff, okay, go ahead. Salamat, Chairman. Uh, si Ian, Ian. Nice. Parang I met you na before. Magkaibigan ba tayo with Louie Kao? Yep, opo, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> ah, kaibigan ko ito, Chairman. Hindi ko kasama sa mga disco para party, pero kaibigan ko siya. We have mutual friends, Mr. Chairman. He's yes, uh, uh, very well loved by uh, that uh, group of my barkada na kaibigan ko. I've been asking him very soft questions and I'm showing what he's got. I'm not asking him whether there's uh, uh, other things. Di ba? And so far, I'm satisfied. So, uh, let me just ask... Pinoy na Pinoy yan po, Mr. Chairman. Pinoy na Pinoy yan. Ian, good to see you, Ian. Kau pala. Hey, Hindi kita na pansin mo. Good to see you. So, ano naman, mix eh. Lahat, Pinoy na Pinoy. Pagkakaibigan mo, Pinoy na Pinoy. Kahit na komisyon, hindi na ako na. Ingat, ingatan mo. Ingatan mo. Kasi kasama, kasama ko kasi yan. Kumain ng, ano, ng uh, Chinese food. <laughs> Ganun ba? Kaya <laughs> kira sa'yo, pagkakain ka ng Chinese food, hindi ka nagsasama ng mga kaibigan mo, katulad ko. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, going back to Mr. Uh, uh, you're doing fine, by the way. I, I, I just wanted you to show na 
baka yung mga tinuturo sa'yo na magulang mo, uh, makagawa ka. Now, what can you contribute to the Philippines apart from your investment, apart from getting jobs? What do you see yourself in the Philippines in about 20 years? Actually, sir, um, I, um, I really want to um, expand my empire. And at the same time, part of that is um, giving back to the country. Of course, um, because um, if we're benefiting from it, and then um, just like what we're doing right now, our business is not that big, but at our small way, we try to give back to the country, especially, um, for example, this pandemic, and then with the typhoon, that Odette typhoon, it's not much, sir, but um, we want to, we have a certain um, portion also from our business that we give back to the country, sir. Hello. Anything more? Sorry, sir. Na, um, it's it's crap, so I didn't hear. Well, sir, it's a new negotiation. Mara may kalan na ipon, correct? Um, actually, sir, um, we're starting because we're expand. Kami na nag expand slowly. So actually, sir, we started with one vessel lang talaga. Eh. Isang barko lang eight years ago. Yeah, so, you're like my friend. Uh, kailan na ni Si Mr. Roble, Joy Roble. Ako nag-inaugurate yung mga barko nila many years ago. Uh, isa lang ang barko nila. Ngayon ang barko nila mga 48 na ata. Alright? Roble lang. So, meron meron mga Pilipino na marunong magnegosyo. No? Uh, and, uh, uh, yun na nga, kaya tinatanong ko lang. No? Uh, pero meron ka na naipon, di ba? Hindi ka magiging ward ng state, di ba? Nagsusugal ko ba? Mayroon may mahiling na Chinese nagsusugal eh. Sometimes, sir, if uh, we need to bring the, your your Chinese friends and then PR, then you bring them there, they play. But I'm um, very controlled. Yeah. Kasi yan yung... Saan mo sa Pilipinas? Minsan Soler, minsan Okada. Depende, sir, kung saan nila gusto. Because ah, they want saan? to... Bawa? Pogo? Sa Pogo? Hindi, boss, sir. Sa Soler, sa Okada. Ah, sa so Okada. Yes. Yes, sir. Wala naman kasi na yung poko dito eh. Kanyan eh. Internet yan eh, di ba? Yeah, internet, sir. It's not um, it's not land-based. Oo nga. Oo nga. Oo nga. Thank you for educating me. No, uh, sir. <laughs> I know you know it, but... Um, anyway, uh, all right. And you have a nice car, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a particularly uh, touchy question with me. You have a Porsche. Yes, sir. Uh, how much did you get that Porsche? Um, is it a Porsche or Porsche? Di ako tinuturo ng Porsche, sir. Porsche, Porsche, Porsche. All right, Porsche. Uh, and uh, twenty twenty one, right? Yes, sir. Twenty twenty one, yes, sir. And you have also a Mercedes Benz, right? Yes, sir. And do you have other cars? Um, Porsche with um high ace expedition. The Ferrari I sold for uh, for the Porsche, sir. All right. Did you get that Porsche secondhand or first hand? Um, brand new, sir. Brand new. Wow. Yes. That cost you a pretty penny. I'm not going to ask you about that. Hindi ka makasama sa farmery, no? Ah, hindi, sir. Hindi pa tayo sa farmery. Meron silang Porsche. Meron silang... Ano mo? Ano mo? Alphard. Mura lang yun. Mura lang yung Alphard. Yung mga amahal, yung binigay kay Twinkle. Lamborghini. Di ba counter culture sa Chinese yun na magkaroon ng magandang kotse at na habi mo, nag-iipong ka para papasong sa negosyo, di ba? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yun ba, ino-offer sa iyo ng mga bebenta dito? Magkagaling sila mag-offer? Sige na, investment na ito. Kasi I'm curious, ang dami may Porsche eh. Actually, no, sir. Actually, for the longest time, naman, uh, when the when it's not pandemic, sir, we we, we rarely have time to really go uh, um mag, mag, to buy cars or to drive a uh, to drive around. You but drive that Porsche. That's a high performance engine. Yes, sir. Some of the other 
drive around sir um going sa dinay ang hindi mo pinapatak mo na madulin hindi naman sir actually okay. um hindi naman sir i i have a Mustang 65 1965 wow kailan ayo ha matagal ko nang ariyan no no araw siguro 30 years na 2020 yeah 30 years 30 years taas ng value niya i never thought of buying a Porsche and then that's me no uh Pero pagka may Porsche, or when I was young, my father had a Mercedes-Benz Delawa, and uh, we were not even in government at that time. Mm. But uh, in the ko lang, I suppose pagka nakapag-ipog ka, you want to have your children, uh, now we can afford this, or better off, pero mag-ipon pa rin kayo, right? Mag-ipon pa rin kayo, correct? Correct, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, tama? Yes, sir. Botan siya, di ba? Uh. Hotcha. Hotcha. Ah, ano hotcha? Pa? Hotcha, di ba? Hotcha. Oh, hotcha. Yes, sir. Hotcha. 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 Uh, no, sir. Ako po, uh, Mr. Chairman, I strongly endorse Ian also to uh, the citizenship and I will help you, boss. I will help you, Chairman, pass it in the plenary. Hi. I don't think I would need help with this guy. But thank you very much. Uh, I know you're, you're earning a lot of brownie points with Mr. Oh, I hope you've just shared me the brownie points that you're earning from your friends. <laughs> he will treat you also to Chinese food. Masarap na dim soup. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mix. So, Thanks, uh, are there any other members of the committee here? Mr. Uh, Senator Anoy is here, Mr. Per Mr. Chairman, Senator uh, Lapid, my uh, oh, Senator, our Lapid, yeah. Senator Lapid, do you have any questions? Wala, wala, sinosuportahan ko lang yan, Sir Chair. Lapid, Bakit mo sinosuportahan? Bila po lako niya, ala siya kasi. Alam ko, mahilig ka magpakain ng Pampango food, pero Chinese food, hindi kita alam na kumakain ka ng Chinese food. Uh, masarap yan, masarap. Uh, masarap ba? May pagka-Chinese din kasi ako, Songko yung uh, lolo ko. Uh -huh. May lola ko, Songko, lapit. Yan. Hindi uh -huh. uh -huh. mo yan, lapit, gumagawa ng mga lapit, ha? Ayun nga, mga, dito nga lakasang ano nun, business. <laughs> Biro lang. Oh, sige. Salamat, so, salamat, salamat. Thank you supporting. Thank you for speaking out. Uh, I guess I have no more questions, and I think uh, the chairman is disposed to uh, providing you with the citizenship, so I, I, I will be able to take uh, you to the floor with, of course, the support of the distinguished majority floor leader, a uh, good friend from way back, and, uh, and with our friend Senator Lapid, I think you will not have any problem. Thank you so much, sir. Unless something comes up. Are you sure there is no other uh, report na makukul natin na papangit? Ah, wala, sir. Wala. <laughs> uh, that's why I put you on the road. Pag may lumabas ng pangit dyan, baka nagsinungaling ka. Malaki sir, if... sa pain ng forgery. Yes, sir. I know. Yes, sir. Sige, thank you. Thank you. Salamat, salamat sir. Okay. And uh, what is your name of your wife? Sherry? Ano? Ano ba nalang Sherry? Blair, sir. Blair. Blair? Yes, sir. Ano pa nga na? Blair. Saan nag-aaral si Kwan? Saan mo siya naloko? Sa St. Binod rin? Um, hindi, sir. Actually, after after school na, sir. Sa mga Sabi party. Sa, sa party. Yes, sir. Ha? Sa party, sir. Party? <laughs> yes, sir. Yung kain-kain, ganun. Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> May ligay ko ba? You eat out all the time. Sige, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Salamat. Thank you, sir. Uh, the uh, the uh, secretary is uh, directed uh, to prepare the... Uh, Submission to the floor of uh, Mr. Kwok, yung Ian, para makahabol pa this uh, session. Sir, can I get the permission to leave already or I need to stay? No, oh, you can go. You can right, go. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, you everyone. So, muna ako isama dahil I'm on a diet. After any time, sir. After pandemic, sir, any time. No, 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 no. Thank you. I'm just kidding. Uh, you, uh, you, you, you should be proud of yourself because uh, bata-bata mo, you're sitting in the board of Benguet, uh, and of course, uh, uh, Congressman Romualdez is a good friend, uh, but not because of that, but I know that he would not recommend somebody who is uh, not qualified. 
and sir, we're very thankful of also to them for giving us the chance to perform because there's a lot of people that are good, but they are not given the chance to perform, sir. So we're also very thankful to them, sir, to give us that opportunity. As well. It's not enough to be good. You have to do good, right? Of course, of course sir. Hindi yes. pwede mapahiya, sir. Tama. Hindi mo ko papahiya, no? Hindi pwede, sir. Thank you. I'd like to meet you soon in the future. I hope I can meet you and your wife. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank or you. Sir. And uh, say, ako ninong mo, tsaka si Mick Subiri, ang illegitimate ninong mo. Opo. Yung Pilipino. Opo. At ang illegitimate si Lito Lapid. <laughs> so sad. Biro lang lahat siya, na? Uh, Freeway. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, we shall now get uh, uh, Patrick Francois Renucci. Thank you very much. You may now uh, withdraw, uh, Mr. Ian. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And congratulations, sir. Uh, motion to mix. No objections. <clears throat> no objections, Mr. Chairman. Uh, move to approve this uh, on committee level. No objections. Uh, the uh, uh, the application for citizenship is favorably endorsed to the committee on the motion of Senator Lapid Duranov Shilip, approved by the committee. Thank you very much. I will now call on Patrick uh, Francois Renucci. Uh, Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Patrick. Uh, uh, you come very well recommended by a lot of friends, and uh, uh, you're like that priest that I we gave citizenship to, but you're not a priest, are you? You're Italian and uh, French, right? Yes, yes. French and Italian. And uh, which one are you? French or Italian? Uh, depends. For the food, I'm more Italian. Uh, the food, for, more Italian. For the so you're the worst. pasta king. You're the pasta king. Exact. Exact. Uh, by the way, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I would have to ask, uh, uh, are there any... Uh, uh, comments from uh, the DFA because I'm sure you pass on the applications of this gentleman at the lower house. Uh, would that be correct? Uh, anybody from DFA here? Uh, attorney. Uh, we'd like to recognize the following. Asex and Mangalile, are you there? Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Can you raise your hand so I can see you and press your button? There you go. So you have no objections to the previous uh, applicant? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we do not have any derogatory information against the uh, petitioner, the previous petitioner. Okay, very good. Uh, and uh, the other ones are uh, from the DOJ, Office of Sandra Guevara. Is uh, Emeline Vigar there? Anybody from DOJ? Chief State Council George or Orta, the third, the second. Asset Nicholas Relix T, State Council Melvin Suarez, State Council Ruben Luna. Are any of you? Who's that? Good morning, Mr. Chairman. State Council Melvin Suarez, sir. Yes, uh, Melvin, do uh, you have any objections? Sir, uh, we, the Department of Justice uh, interposes no. Uh, objection to the passage uh, of the bill uh, granting Philippine citizenship to the subject foreign national, provided that uh, there is no derogatory record or information is filed against him with the DFA, the NBI, the Bureau of Immigration, the National Intelligence and Coordinating Agency, and other relevant agencies. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Melvin. Uh, and your run, Melvin, is uh, under Secretary Wa? State okay. Council. Uh, uh, for uh, Mr. Chairman. Melvin Suarez. Are you from Pampanga? From Southern Leyte, Mr. Chairman. Leyte. You've been hit bad there, Southern Leyte. Uh, yes, Mr. Southern Chairman. There, right across. Tremendous help there. Uh, we're cleaning yes, food, we're providing water, we're providing food, and GI sheets now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. All right. Now, uh, from the Sinomena, uh, to the General's office, Fenicar Tabau, are you there? Yes, Fenicar. You have to uh, press the button. Unmute. Unmute this. Can't hear you. You have to unmute. 
Maybe you can call your daughter or your son or your granddaughter to uh, help you press the button. All right, just tell me, are you in favor of granting citizenship to Mr. Uh, Ian Ko? What? Just thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Okay, that will be sufficient to record your approval. Thank you. And then uh, from uh, uh, Migration, uh, from the office of Jimmy Morente, Attorney Tobias M. Javier. Are you there? Is that you, Jimmy, or uh, who's that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Morente, sir. Hi, Jimmy. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, the Bureau of Immigration has no objections to the application of Mr. Kwok Yam Ian Chan, born on 19 June 1987. He does not appear in the Bureau's HDO blacklist, watch list, alert list, and the bulletin of this day. Your Honor. Thank you. So you have no objection. So we can proceed. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Morente. Thank you. Sir. And from Danica? Anybody from Danica? Good afternoon, Your Honor. No objection, sir. Rosalie Escobin from Danica. What is your position there? You're a director Direct of Danica? Yes, sir. Director of the Spatial Security Office. All right. So you do not see him as a threat to our country? No, sir. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's Thank it. You, sir. Yes. So I think the uh, motion of Senator Sabini, Your Honor, should approve uh, can stand. Uh, I'm sorry I had to do it post facto, but I will not make that mistake again. Thank you. Uh, now we have Patrick. Uh, Mr. Chair, Chairman. Okay. Yes, Mr. Do any of the do any of the officials uh, aforesaid from immigration? Uh, so just to cut to the chase, have any derogatory record or any reason why we should object to granting this gentleman uh, uh, status of citizenship? Of course, we will still subject him to investigation and cross examination. Uh, Commissioner Morente, do you have any derogatory record against Mr. Patrick uh, Renucci? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Patrick Francois Renucci. Born on September 15, 1970, does not appear in the Bureau's HDO blacklist, watch list, alert list, and lookout bulletin records. As of this date, Your Honor. Yes, thank you. And, uh, and what about the Department of Justice? Can you show me the Department of Justice, Karina? DOJ? Mr. Suarez? Melvin? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, is Mr. Do you have any record against Mr. Patrick Francois Renucci from the NBI or from the Department of Justice? The regulatory record or things that will uh, uh, impede or prevent him from being a citizen of this country? So far, Mr. Chairman, we haven't received any derogatory information uh, from the NBI regarding Mr. Renucci, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So you have no objections to him, if, assuming we approve him, right? And then the next one is Mr. Mangalye, Senen Mangalye of uh, uh, the DFA. Mr. Chairman, uh, there is nothing in uh, the department's uh, visa lookout list against uh, Mr. Rinucci, and the department has no objection to uh, the proceedings. And from the Solicitor General's office, again, Mr. Phoenicia, Tabao, have you found your button already? Just thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, the record say that uh, there's no objection from the Solicitor General putting the card before the horse here. And from uh, Danica, Rosalie Escobin? No objection, Your Honor. No derogatory record from our end. All right, okay. Uh, we shall now proceed with the, uh, the examination of. Uh, uh, from our standpoint, we have to ask these questions. Uh, Patrick Francois Renucci, uh, you live in Forest Park, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, uh, Majority Floor Leader. Yes. May I make a quick opening statement to sponsor uh, the measure as I'm a yes. co-sponsor? Of course. It's only two paragraphs, sir. If you don't mind, you know. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Venucci is a, a French Italian national who left his hometown in France and Italy in 2015 to dedicate his life to uplifting the Filipino rice farmers of Leyte. That's why it's, uh, it's close to my heart because he's helping the farmers there in, in uh, the impoverished area of Leyte. He's the founder of the Chenyi Agri Ventures and company, it's the company behind the most technologically advanced rice processing center in Southeast Asia, which is also the largest in the Visayas and Mindanao regions. In his efforts to provide low interest loans to the rice farmers, as well as extension services to increase yield and income through the Renucci Partnership Program, Mr. Renucci contracted uh, the deadly cystosomiasis disease three times at the hospital na pusha. He's been hospitalized and had to take chemotherapy treatment uh, in Palo Leyte uh, to survive this disease. That is how dedicated and committed Mr. Renucci is. And this Renucci partnership program aims to increase the income of the rice farmers. And in four years since its launch, about 5,000 farmers have benefited from, benefited from the program, with some farmers increasing their yield from 40 to 50 kavans per hectare to up to 200 kavans uh, per hectare, uh, Mr. Chairman. Most recently, or more recently in 2000, uh, July 2021, Mr. Renucci founded the Renucci Rice Farm Academy, which offers training in high-tech farming and rice production to 925 students who are children of rice farmers. Uh, I hope that one day Mr. Renucci can also uh, go to other parts of the Philippines and uh, do his best practices and success stories, not only in uh, uh, Leyte, but hopefully one day also in Mindanao. Uh, I also like to mention, Mr. Chairman, that uh, his wife, Ms. Renucci, is a very, very dear friend of of your Inanak, uh, Audrey, uh, my wife, and uh, speaks highly, and many friends speak highly of, uh, and of course the locals speak highly of what they have done. So I'm here to sponsor this measure. Manami salamat po, Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator Zubili. You took the words right out of my mouth, as usual. Uh, you know, you know, always um, makes, uh, Senator Zubili always has a tendency, because he's the majority of floor leader, to speak ahead of everybody. <laughs> But that's all right. That's all right. We know each other very well, and I know Audrey has got very good judgment as well. But of course, I have to ask you some question, Patrick, if you don't mind, very quickly. Yes, sure, sure, Senator. Patrick, what made you leave France and uh, to go to the Philippines? You were a banker, and uh, were you a banker in France? Uh, where, where, where I, what? Excuse me, by banker? No, 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 no. I used to run in France one of the major printing company. A printing company. Printing company in France, yes. And, and we were doing all the books for the Museum of the Louvre, for Versailles, for all the big banks in, in France. And uh, we were working for all the perfume, cosmetic, Chanel, Dior, Guerlain. I mean, we, we were one of the major players in printing uh, coffee table books and marketing in, uh, in France. We, we used to have a company over 150 people were running 24-7. And uh, after what happened, it's when Typhoon Yolanda hitted the Philippines, me and my wife, and my wife is a banker, but uh, I, am, I am a printer running my own company. So when we saw the images of the Typhoon Yolanda, because the images went all around the world, and we were so shocked, we were so shocked because we saw so many people desperate and nobody was able to help. So we were very affected because my wife is Filipina and already came to the Philippines on vacation. So I knew a little bit the Philippines, but we didn't know anything about Leyte. But when we saw those images, we said, OK, maybe it's time for us to change the way we are living and to change the way we are earning money. So we should go there in Leyte and to see what kind of sustainable business we could do to help the people to recover. Came here in Leyte, we saw so many rice fields. And so, the, so we said, okay, let's build something about, about the rice. And and so the people in Leyte are better off because you were there, you were able to increase their yield. Is that correct? Yes, yes. What process yes. did you introduce to make sure that their yield increased? We, we try to educate the farmer. We try to educate the farmer uh, to use the proper seeds to, to 
to use the proper and to use how to use it because the, the problem most of the time is the farmer are not very well educated and i'm going to give you an example when they use herbicides herbicides but I could different kind of herbicide, some pre-emergent, emergent, and the farmer, for them, they don't understand. They believe herbicide is herbicide, so sometimes they spend money in the farm, but there is not, not the positive impact. So most of it, to teach, we have field technicians that are roaming around uh, the, the farmer, really to try to teach them. But beyond this, when we arrived in Leyte, there was no mechanization. So we were the first one to introduce mechanization and we introduced massively mechanization because we directly bought 10 combined harvesters, 10 tractors, transplanter, and we started. Now, if you go around Leyte, you will see uh, Leyte is quite mechanized now because we were the first one to show. And you know, the people, when they understand the benefit of mechanization, then they, they replicate and replicate. But at the beginning, when we came, there was no mechanization in Leyte. So that's how we were able to help. And uh, how many uh, We made a survey at the beginning. If I may, if I may butt in. Uh, and how many people have uh, since uh, uh, crossed over to mechanization? It seems that you're putting a lot of uh, uh, purchase on mechanization. Sorry, but what is the question how many how many farmer benefit you're saying you you put in the right seeds varieties and then you put in mechanization is that correct yes R rice yeah. seeds fertilizer uh, and and mechanization. Uh, uh patrick how many how many how many farmers benefited from that only in alang alang yes more than five thousand farmers we we went to alang alang patrana Santa Fe, Aro, San Miguel, but most of the time, yes, we try to focus first in Alang Alang, but also we had the program in Santa Fe, Pastrana. Now with the RCEF program, uh, our program is more challenging because the government is already providing free seeds, free seeds to the farmer, so, uh, and also there is a fertilizer program, so our program now is a little bit more slow, but we are still here to give assistance and uh, to help the, 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 the farmer and also to buy their palai. We are the biggest buyer of palai in Leyte. And also to help the community, because we want to be close to the community and to really understand what are the farmer problems. That's, uh, as uh, Senator Zubiri mentioned, we opened a school and we have nearly 1,000 students now. Every day we have school and we teach the, our students how to do proper farming, how to plant rice, what is the vegetative stage of, of the grain, of the palai. So uh, we believe that we should go through education if we want to solve the rice crisis in the Philippines. And our target is to showcase here in Leyte that our farmer can be uh, sustainable and also our farmer can earn money because there is money into farming. The big problem is they need to increase the yield and that's what we are trying to help. Uh, in our program and in our school. And has the government taken notice of your initiatives? Yes, 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 but we, we feel a little bit alone, alone. But uh, yes, of course, because, uh, for example, if you want to measure the positive impact of our company, uh, you can just take the example of Alang Alang. When we arrived in Alang Alang in 2015, 2016, I'm like answering my question. Uh, has the government taken notice of your initiative so that you could have more rice produce? More rice? Yeah, you're yes, talking about rice, aren't you? The, the, the government is always supportive, you know. They, they really like what we are doing, Governor Petilia, uh, even the President Duterte. Yes, but in the fact, after, we are quite alone. Yeah, but... Uh, you know, if you're so successful, what I'd be thinking would be to ask, uh, you have a school, you say, and mm -hmm. uh, get that uh, training for uh, other farmers in the country so that they can produce more. And uh, what kind of credit did you give uh, so that they could have themselves mechanized? 
Yes. Well, me mechanization now, the government is really helping all the farmer, farmer association, and is giving, the government is giving a lot of tractors, a lot of uh, combine harvester uh, to, 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 to all the farmers in the Philippines. So there is already a big help for mechanization. Now, we are training them how to use the mechanization, because most of the time you give a tractor to the farmer, but then they don't understand maintenance, preventive maintenance. They don't know how to operate. So after one year, most of the time, all this, this equipment is, is not opera, op, operational anymore. So in our school, we have the mechanization uh, course where we teach the farmer how to use the combined harvesters, the tractors, and the transplanters. Uh, uh, another Patrick. Uh, is, are, are the farmers taking you up on mechanization? Are they doing that? Yes, in the school? No. Outside, Outside yes, yes, because now, now there is uh, people, they saw the benefit of mechanization. So now you can find all around Leyte a lot of tractors and combined upstairs. Uh, you know, uh, I've always heard that mechanization is the key, and we're trying to do that, even with the Red Cross when there's a disaster. I've even, you know, uh, thought of uh, providing tractors or other things to our farmers, no? But uh, there's got to be some knowledge uh, uh, on that. Uh, if there are agencies like the Red Cross, which is not a government agency, we'd like to be able to have access to your training if it is really that effective so that before we give it to any of our beneficiaries, they would be trained and they would be benefited, and then that will start the ball rolling on other other farmers who now will have a chance to uh, improve their rice varieties by going to your school or going to the uh, uh, farms that have utilized your methodology. Yes, that that's a very, yes, Senator, that's a very good idea. We should work more closely with the government. When they release equipment, the, the, the farmers, they should come for to our school, for example, and take this course on mechanization so we are sure that then after they will use properly the combined harvester, the tractors, uh, instead of doing a tries and error. And most of the time, after one year, they don't, they didn't do any preventive maintenance, and uh, nobody can use this equipment anymore. From Alan, you mentioned several towns that are using it now. Uh, has there been a dramatic increase in their livelihood or in their standard of living? Yes, yes, but still not enough. Because uh, mechanization, it's only one part of it. They need also to do proper farming. And uh, uh, that's still what we are trying to uh, teach them in the school. Uh, when we arrived in Leyte, the farmer, if they didn't understood what was registered seed, certified seeds, they didn't understand. They were just planting whatever kind of seeds they were able to find. So. We believe that mechanization is very important, but education is also a big part of it. And I just wanted to make sure how effective you are because you're applying for citizenship. And if you get to be a citizen, I'd like to see you be able to expand your knowledge and share it with our country. Yes, we hopefully, hopefully we will love to do that. But you know, we have to be here all the time. And uh, now inspe inspection, I don't know, expansion, is, I don't know if it, we can expand because we already have a lot of work to do here in Leyte. But what we are more than happy is to share with other millers or other businessmen our model, and we will be loved. We loved. We will be, be loved to be to be replicate everywhere in the Philippines. What uh, we are doing okay, here, let here is. Let me go to another point. You have children. Yes, one children. Okay. How many kids do you have? One children, one, one girl. One, one child. child. And uh, do you speak the language, our language, or any dialect? No, no. Uh, mm. Sorry, I'm sorry, but you know, in the Philippines, and, and, and I know it seems to be incredible, I've been here for so long, but the beauty of the Philippines, everybody speaks English. Uh, even when I go to the farm, and you see in the very... Uh, uh, far areas, all the farmer, they all speak English. English. So I was not able to learn any Tagalog or any Warai. 
Only few words. Hey, what are you? All right. Uh, and what is Chen Yi Adventures? Is that your company? Yes. Yes. Me and what my wife. Chen Yi. Because my, my wife is Filipina Chinese. Yeah. And when we came here, when we came here, and we understand in the Philippines, a lot of business are owned by Chinese. So, Which is Filipina, because, right? Yes. Usually it's Filipina, right? Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, we, we didn't want to call it with a European name or Filipino name. We wanted to to be low profile, and that's why we choose a Chinese name. All right. Uh, uh, you own property in the Philippines already? No, no, not yet. But you do live in 35 Banaba Road, Forest Park, Makati. Yes, that's my mother-in-law residence. Oh, all right. And you did not bring any savings of yours from uh, France? Yes, we, we, br we brought a lot of savings and we invested all our savings here in uh, Alangalang Leite. Mm -hmm. And uh, your wife stays with you in Leite? Yes. She's right next to me now. And uh, so For, far, uh, just, Senator, well, just to to add to to, uh, to see the, what is the positive impact on our company on the community. When we arrived in Alangalang, Alangalang was a third class municipality. But then after when we did the program and we increased the income of the farmer, Alang Alang became a second class municipality. And now we have a GNF, we have a Pure Gold, we have a, a Jollibee, we have a Andox. But before that, Alang Alang was really not known at all. It was a really small municipality. But because of the positive impact of what we are doing and increasing the, the, the income of the farmer, Alang Alang was able to raise up and become a second-class municipality. And that's right. the positive it's impact quality, on the right? community. Excuse me, sorry, Senator. Your rice is export quality. Our rice is a, yes, ultra-premium quality. You don't sell it in the domestic market. We don't sell it. You do not sell your rice to the domestic market. Is that correct? We do, we do, we do. Because now, you know, the people, uh, most of the time, they, they are used to imported rice. But, when slowly, they just your again. And how many times do you harvest? Two times a year. Two times a year. Uh, you have how much is that yield per harvest? So the the yield per harvest, uh, the the farmers they, they reach in between one one hundred caban to two hundred caban maximum. Sorry. How much? The, the, the farmers they reach. The average is 100 caban of palai to 200 caban of palai per hectare. 100 caban of palai? Yes. Per hectare? 200 per hectare, yes. Uh, in the so th th there is still space for improvement. Excuse me, Senator. Uh, your mic is off, Senator. I I like the fact that you are coming in. You're married to a Filipina, but I uh, and you are bringing in technology that uh, obviously has worked very well for you. How will it benefit the whole country? That's why I was asking you how we can share that technology throughout the entire country. That makes you a worthwhile. Yes. <coughs> Yes. So what what we believe is local rice is much, much better for the health than imported rice. Why? Because when you import rice, you have to spray chemical. It's by law. It's by law. So the more you eat local rice, the better is the is, is for the health of the Filipino people. So hopefully we, we would like to invite all the other millers in the Philippines to visit uh, our company to see what we are doing 
when we do rice here uh, with the Japanese technology and to see what we are doing outside with our farmer. We believe that we need to work all together. The, but the problem is not only for the millers or the farmer. We need to work all together because the benefit will be the country of the Philippines. And we hope that we can solve the rice crisis in the Philippines if we are more into technology and we can increase the yield of the farmer. And also, uh, we can solve the food security problem of the Philippines. Today, uh, the, the, the food security program of the Philippines is a little bit weak. People sometimes they get confused in food security and food supply. Food supply is not food security. And here in the Philippines, we are at risk. And we know the world is becoming crazy. There is climate change. So we need to be prepared and to have a very strong food security program. So hopefully, uh, we hope our model will be replicated by other millers all over the Philippines. Of Palay, right? And that is your yield. How many, when you convert that to metric tons, how much is it? How much is, sorry, sorry, Senator? 4.09 metric tons or 4,090 kilograms. How many of that per hectare? Because you're saying you have 100. Uh, yes, yes. So the, 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 yield, the yield is uh, around uh, three, tons, of, uh, three tons, three metric tons, three metric tons to, to uh, seven metric tons. We had some farmer that were in our program where they reach over 10 tons per hectare. 10 tons per hectare. I'm just trying to do an analysis of your yield uh, because the average yield per hectare in our country is 4.09 metric tons or 4,090 kilograms. Now you have 100 uh, cabans uh, per hectare. How many kilograms would that be? Can you, can you compare? Yes, five tons. It's around 50 to 60 kilo per caban. 50 to 60? Kilos per caban of palai. So it's around five tons or 100. So but you have uh, slightly higher than the average yield. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, but, you're, but, slightly, you're slightly higher than the average yield, the 4.09 metric tons. Yes, but some of that's that's the good farmer. Some of the farmer, they only reach three tons. But there are other reasons for that: no irrigation, uh, for seeds, uh, no yes. mechanization. Uh, they yes. don't. Um, they get uh, interdicted by typhoons and many things, right? Many things, many things, and also most of the time, you know, there is the problem in between uh, the tenants or the caretaker and the landowner. That's also a big problem, you know, because the, the landowner, most of the time, they, they have caretaker, and the caretaker just do uh, farming. It's, they consider farming sometimes like extra income. Uh, they have another job. They have the petty cab, or they work uh, in the sunny, sunny store, and they do farming. But farming, for them, they consider as extra income. So they don't go to the farm every day. And that's why our school is very important, because we explain the farmer that you need to monitor your farm every day. Farming should be a full-time job. You don't have to go there all day long, but at least two hours every day to monitor your farm. All right, uh, let's get out of farming. Uh, what the, over and above that, which is uh, salutary, that you are coming in here to farm, what other re things uh, can you convince me to give you citizenship in other words uh why do you want to be a filipino yeah, i want to be a filipino because now i am living here and i feel the philippine like my it's my home and I'm, I'm i'm going to stay here for longer i'm going to stay here the rest of my life so in my heart i'm already filipino so now i would be i would like to be filipino or so on the paper but I consider the Philippines and what uh, my engagement and what I'm doing for the Philippines, I consider the Philippines like my, my country. So I think it's a natural uh, process now to be able to be granted as a Filipino. 
to really be part of it. Well, you've spent six years here, uh, and so far what I've seen is that you're trying to do something about rice, but that's also part of your living, right? And you've married yeah. a Filipina, and uh, this, this family operates uh, a very big major company here, Baguio Oil. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, I know them uh, to a certain extent. Uh, but can you convince me what other things you can contribute to the Filipino uh, nation or uh, convince me why uh, uh, we should grant you citizenship in terms of uh, what other things can we can you can you provide the country in terms of contribution? Okay, but it's always about agree. Huh? What we can help is to help the, the, the country to reach rice sufficiency. We believe it's possible. Okay? And we uplift the lives of the farmer. So this is a huge positive impact on all the community here in Leyte. And hopefully, as I mentioned before, we would love to be copied and to be replicated. And all together, we can change the rice crisis in the Philippines and the food security program. Okay, uh, what other businesses do you have in the Philippines? Uh, but th that's all. 100% of our time is dedicated to uh, Cheney doing rice, farming, uh, the school, and... Uh, and how many students does, does that school have? Excuse me, sir. How many students do you have in your school? Almost 1,000 students. And what is the course they take? Uh, modern rice farming. Modern rice farming. And you have other teachers, right? And we have? Teachers, teachers. Yes, yes. We have more than... We, we have staff, yes. We have uh, 15 uh, trainers. We have uh, 15... Uh, um, yeah. Helpers, you know, helpers. So, no, yes, we have assistants. We have school every day, every day here. All right. Uh, any questions from the panel? Another Lapid? None whatsoever, sir. You know, my background is agri, so I have the highest respects for Mr. Renucci. And as again, I'm happy to hear him say he's willing to replicate uh, the technology and help us uh, do it in Mindanao as well. Uh, Bukidnon is also a very rich uh, rice uh, producing uh, community. So uh, one day I'll go visit him there in uh, Leyte with my wife and we'll see it for ourselves. Together with you, Chairman, maybe we can visit so that we can do this, not only in uh, Bindanao, but also in Sambales and other areas uh, that we need to help, uh, particularly with the rice farmers. Yeah, I, I, I have no questions, no further questions, Mr. Chairman, and I fully support his application. I think the thrust of my questions has been to spread the technology if indeed it is effective. And uh, we are, the issue here is citizenship and, uh, um, you know, uh, in, in, in the requirements for citizenship, uh, how, 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 far, how, how much do you know your history? Anybody can say, I want to be a Filipino and I'm, I'm teaching here, etc., etc. Uh, do you have any derogatory record uh, in your past life in France or Italy? Any regulatory? Interrogatory? Yes. No, uh, no, no. No, no. We, 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 I didn't run away from my country. We really decide. When Typhoon Yolanda eated Leyte, that's when we decided for us to change the way we're living and earning money. And we moved and we sold our companies and we moved to Leyte. And you don't have any more animus libertendi. You don't want to go back to France anymore or to Italy. Which uh, part of uh, which country do you want to revert to, just in case? No, oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine here in the Philippines. Philippines is a beautiful country already. But of course, uh, I'm not saying that we we'll never go back to France or to Italy. And I have also some relatives there, so I will go. Yeah, and you have family in France? Hmm? You have family in France? Yes, yes. Father, mother? Yes, father, mother, sisters, brothers. Former wife? 
No. No? All right. Uh, okay. And in Italy, I have my cousins, uncles. And do you have other properties here apart from the... You own the property in Alang Alang. How much did you invest in Alang Alang? In Alang Alang, we invest overall uh, over one billion. One billion? Yes. Yes. We, we, once again, we built the most advanced rice processing complex in all Southeast Asia. And that's why um, we will be more than happy if Senator Zubiri and, and, and you, Senator Gordon, if you are able to come to visit and you will understand how different is our company. Well, we From built houses in Alang Alang uh, during Haiyan. We built a lot of houses there. Uh, yeah. Alang Alang. So I've been there, but I, I, I didn't see you there because you just arrived at that time, I suppose. Exactly, because after the Typhoon Yolanda, then we have to settle our stuff in, 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 in France. We cannot just live like this, so it took time. It's uh, really something there. there. You have a home in Alang Alang. Yes, yes. How big is your property in Alang Alang? But here, here uh, the, the compound of the factory, it's about eight hectares. Eight hectares? Yes. And you say it's a factory. Why do you say it's a factory? <laughs> because it's, it's a factory. We, we have the drying facility. We can dry uh, up to 600 tons per day. Then we have silos. Then we have milling. So it's a, it's a factory. We operate like a factory. So you have a silo, you have a drying facility. Yes, you have we have everything. 10 dryers, all from Japan. And, and that is also going to be uh, available to the other farmers. I suppose you make money out of the other farmers if they want to dry it, instead of drying it on the uh, yes. cement pavement, right? They dry it in your area. Yes. Yes. And in order to get a better price, they would put it in your silo. How big is your silo? Uh, we, we have four silo, 1,500 1, tons each. 1,500 tons each. And how many would that be in terms of cabans of rice? Or, uh, sorry, I'm not a farmer. I I look at it as the old way, cabans. But you now look at it as metric tons of rice, right? Yes. I will tell you. Uh... I'm sorry I have to ask you all these questions because I... If anybody came it's in a, here... Each uh, silo, it's uh, 30, 30 to 40,000 cabans. 40,000 cabans? Yeah, per silo. Per silo, so that's 80,000 cabans. And you have plans of expanding it? Uh, yes, we would love to. But uh, the what, what we want, it's... Uh, we don't want to store for very long the palai. The palai, we store it in the silo, but we, we want to sell it right away because when... You store palai, it's just like if you store money in the bank. Okay. All right. I just want to be sure that uh, you're here for the duration of your life and that uh, you raise your Filipino, uh, your children as Filipinos. And uh, I don't mind you raising them as part France and France Italy. Maybe they can, they can set up an Italian restaurant or a French restaurant here in the country. <laughs> I know that Mix likes that, and Audrey likes that, and uh, so, okay, uh, are there any other questions? Mix, you want to do uh, anything here? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, there being no other questions and no, no derogatory remarks or uh, uh, negative remarks from our distinguished panel, I move that we approve on committee level the application for citizenship of uh, Mr. Uh, Patrick Francois Renucci. Uh, uh, I just want to Merci be beaucoup. Sure. I, I, uh, I, I did it with the other one. Uh, will the secretary please remind the chairman that you have to put the witness under oath so that uh, whatever he says is uh, uh, is under uh, is uh, true. So go ahead. You got to lift your load. Uh, raise your hand, hand, please. Mr. Iluchi, please raise your right hand. Uh, I think it, uh, do, you swear you swear to tell, do, you, do you swear that everything that you have said in this hearing is utterly true and no falsity was included, including fake news? Okay, I swear that all that I uh, was able to talk about and to say during this meeting is true and no lies. You no... say yes. 
I never thought that the French would uh, speak in kilometers or of, uh, of language. It's a simple yes or no would suffice. Oui, monsieur. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. Oui, monsieur. Oui, monsieur. Okay, the director yes. said that the witness has uh, held accountable for all the statements made under this uh, statement. And I admonish the, the, the secretary to make sure that all our witnesses will be uh, properly taken, uh, given, uh, the, uh, administer the oath. Uh, am I making myself clear, yeah, sir? Thank you. thank you. You know, thank you. Uh, based on that, there are no objections. Then we can bring you to the plenary uh, already. Uh, hopefully, we can finish you uh, your citizenship uh, before uh, we adjourn. And I'm sure, knowing me, he will try to bulldoze everybody to make sure that your citizenship is approved. Thank you Mr. very much, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the reason yeah. why he likes to talk, I think, is in his Italian blood. Uh, the Italian friends, <laughs> friends that I have love to talk. Italian speak, speak with their hands, you know. Capisce? Yeah. You know, like, it's true. It's true. Uh, uh, like like uh, Al Pacino, you know. Uh, yes. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations, sir. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good uh, uh, session is suspended for uh, a few minutes, and I'll call you back. Yeah. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Diang Siwu. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, he is already in the in the meeting. Where is he? In the meeting. Yeah. All right. Is it Wu Liangxi or how do? What is your name? And I guess I'm the Tsonga Tua. Da. I need the Suya Chi. Yeah. Is that Wu Liangxi? Is that your full name? Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Wu Liangxi, you are. Hi. Okay. You are recognized by the chairman, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Here to speak up. Can you hear me? That was it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh. Chairman. Opo. Okay. Narinig mo ako. Yung ano, yung... Oh, okay. Anong pangalan mo? U Liang Si. U Liang Si. So, mali yung palang pala sabi ko. Yung kanina siya pinakita sa akin dito, mali yung pagkasabi. Uh, anong family name doon? Yung Wu o Li Liang Si? Wu. Wu. Miss Wu. W-A. Spelling, spelling on W-U. Oh, W-U. Ah, sigurado ka yung spelling. Ang oh. spelling is yung Wu. Sa'yo, Wu. Opo. Sigurado. Wu, Wu, Wu. Ganun ba yan? Hindi yan. Wu. Wu lang. Alright. Okay. Uh, to cut to the chase, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, do you have any derogatory record? Ano ko bang ginawa ang kalokohan dito sa Pilipinas o sa ibang bansa? Wala, wala chairman, wala. Wala po? Oo, wala po. Okay. Ano ka tagal ka na dito? Uh, 27, 27 taon na. 27 taon? Oo. Uh, ano, ano yung 27 sa Tagalog? Ha? Huh? Ano yung 27 sa Tagalog? 27. Spanish yun eh. <laughs> Dalawang pito. Dalawang pito. pito. Taon. Okay. Again. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Secretary, have you forgotten your duty again? Uh, sir, uh, uh, let me put the applicant on oath. Uh, Mr. Li Wang Si, kindly raise your hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Opo. Ngayon din yan, man. Tubusong ba yan? At ang sasabihin mo dito sa hearing na ito, eh, pawang katotohanan at walang kasinungalingan? Oo. Alam ko yan. Opo. Chairman. Chairman. Sige. Thank you. Okay. Dalawampung pitun taon ka na dito. Sige. Ikuwento mo sa amin ang buhay mo dito ng dalawampung pitun taon. Kasi, 
Hindi, Hindi no? Naga pinaanak ko dun sa dun sa dun sa China. Tapos yung 11, 11 years o naga numatin ko dito sa Pilipinas niyan. Tapos naga ala ko dun sa Kalokan, yung Philippine Consular High School. Tapos after naga naga ala ko dun mga mga lima taon. Tapos naga trabaho ko na. Dati naga trabaho ko dun sa Divisoria. Ano yung Philippine High School? Chinese School? Chinese School. Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。Sinisipo。S
Ay, doon tayo namatay. Flip flop. <laughs> <laughs> Yun, kasi yung English, totoo yung, totoo yung, yung mga English, hindi ko masyado sanay nun sa English niya. Okay. Ah, so, uh, ang Rolex sa'yo, Rolex. <laughs> ah. Okay, sige. Ah, uh, bibiro lang ako. Anyway, ah, uh, so, pinaghirapan mo yan para mapalaki mo ang mga pamilya mo. Ilan ang pamilya mo? Uh, isa lang. <laughs> isa lang, o. Oh. Ilan ang anak mo? Tatlo. Tatlo. Nasa sila? Nasa Hong Kong sila, na yun. Bakit hindi mo pinaaral dito? Hindi, kasi yung... Kasi yung... Kasi yung asawa ko, Chinese nun, no? Doon lang... Doon lang siya nakatira doon, sa Hong Kong. E ba paano pag nag-Pilipino ka na? Paano yung asawa mo? Doon na lang sila, tatong anak mo doon. Hindi, kung naka-Pilipino city siya lang ako, yung, yung, yung mga asawa ko at yung mga anak ko siya, siya, siya punta dito. Ah, hinihintay lang mag-Pilipino ka? Oo. Bakit kayo aalis sa Hong Kong? Maganda naman ang buhay doon, ha? Hindi, maha, hindi, maha ko, hindi, hindi, maha ko lang ng Pilipinas. Siyempre, mataka lang ako dito sa Pilipinas yan. Lahat ng kaibigan ko, Pilipino na. Tapos yung doon sa Hong Kong, wala ko kaibigan ko doon. Wala ko hanap buhay doon. Tsaka pati doon sa China, kunti lang ko kaibigan doon. Tsaka yung mga kamaranak ko, tsaka yung mga kaibigan ko. Lahat lang dito sa Manila. Hmm. Saka legitimate ang negosyo mo. Wala kang mga pogo. Wala, 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 wala po. Siyama, wala po. Ang negosyo mo talaga chanela sa saka ano pa? Saka, saka yung, saka yung deyati. Deyati. Realty. Ilan ang mga bahay na nabenta mo? Hindi ko alam yun, no? Kasi yung, kasi yung kasusyong ko sila nakaaskaso nun. Ang ginagawa niya, namimili kayong lupa, tapos nabibenta, nagagawa kayo ng bahay. Tapos binibenta oh. niya, buy and sell. Opo, opo. Oo. Uh, mm. Baka hindi kayo naiboto ni Cynthia Villar dahil nag-re-realty ka. Hindi, <laughs> kasi nung sa... So... <laughs> Hindi kasi, hindi kasi doon sa politiko, hindi ko masyaro yung ano. <laughs> Saan yung factory? Sa daro yung factory mo? Sa Teresa Rizal. Teresa? Lalo oh, tayo ng Teresa dito? Malayo-layo yun ah. Mga, kung wala terapi, mga one hour. One hour. Paano ka nakapasok doon sa Teresa? Paakit, pa, pa, daan doon sa Marcos Highway, tapos paakit doon sa Sumonong Ay, uy. Tapos, pa, 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 Bakit ka nakapunta doon? Bakit ka nakapunta doon? Meron kang kaibigan doon? Binentahan ka ng lupa? Hindi. Kasi yung... Kasi yung... Yung, yung, yung mga kamaanak, yung factory andyan nun. Sa, dun, dun, sa, dun sa Teresa. Tapos, lagi nakapasya ko doon. Maraming ko kaibigan doon. Maraming kang kaibigan doon. Tsaka, panay mito. Nakadaktaw. Nakadara ko bigas doon. Patunay doon sa mga... Mm-hmm. Uh, kaya mong buhay ang isang ilim mo dito, di ba? At saka yung mga pamilya mo. Yes. Hello? Hello? Yan na. Ah, uh, talaga dito, ikaw ay legitimate director of the Filipino Chinese General Chamber of Commerce. Hindi yung hospital. Director ka doon sa General oh. Chamber of Commerce? Hindi, pero yung hospital, yung Chinese hospital, ano, ano doon sa, uh, doon, doon sa Chinese Chamber Association yan, ano doon. Oh, ang magpapatakbo noon yung Philippine Chinese General Chamber of Commerce, correct? Oo, oh, tama, tama, tama po. Pero hindi ka ikaw nagpapatakbo ng hospital. Ando ko na sa oh, oh. General Chamber of Commerce. Oo, oh, oo. Oh. Opo. Oh, oh. Anong ginagawa mo doon para baga ikaw director? Magtatrabaho ka ba? Tumutulong ka sa pagpatakbo ng hospital? Hindi. Kung may, kung, hmm. kung halimbawa, kung may nakadunet yung mga, kung yung, chem, kung yung Chinese Chamber, kung may nakatulong doon sa, sa, sa yung mga mahihidap, ako lagi nakasama noon. 
Ah, oh, pagka tumutulong sila, madala sila lumalabas, di ba? Kilala ko yung mga yan eh. Oh, no. Tsaka, 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 bakit gusto mo mag-Pilipino? Hindi, kasi, 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 kasi matakal, matakal ko dito na sa Pilipinas yan. Tapos yung dahil ng yung kaibigan ko, tsaka, yung, tsaka dahil ng yung hanabuhay ko dito sa Pilipinas na. Tsaka, tsaka dun sa China, kunti lang ko kaibigan nun. Wala ko kilala dun. Wala ko hanabuhay dun. Nandito ko na lahat. Oo. Di, dito ko lahat. Simple, simple yung bata pa ako papunta dito sa Pilipinas na. So, hindi ko pati dun sa China. 20, 27 taon dito lang ako handa buhay dito sa Pilipinas yan. Mm -hmm. Sino mga nakakakilala siya dito sa Pilipinas? Si James Marami. D. James D. Oh. Sino ba <laughs> si James D? Ha? Sino si James D? Yung Pilipino... Presiden ng Philippine Chamber yung 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 Chamber Association niyan. Tsaka yung tsaka siya yung presiden ng Chinese General Hospital. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Tingin mo malaking tulot na uh, nakakatulong kayo sa serbisyo sa mga tao, di ba? Maraming pulis pinapagawa ng libre, di ba? Opo. Opo. Ang hirap na tao, nagre-refer tayo ng mga pasyente, tinutulungan niya, di ba? Oo. Oh. Opo, opo. Ikaw, binatulungan ka ba doon? Sa, tu, meron. Oh. Oh. Meron ko tulong nun. Oh, ano tulong mo doon? Sa, may, han, tingnan mo, yung ano, yung naka-COVID to, before naka-COVID, dami lang ko bili yung mga mask na kadunay ko doon sa hospital, tsaka doon sa, dala ko doon sa Teresa, doon sa, doon sa, Manisuela. Look at the phone and we get a face mask. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mitsubiri, uh, Mr. Senator, do uh, you have any questions? Uh, none at all, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, he was highly recommended by our dear friend, <clears throat> Mr. James D., Dr. James D. So uh, I have no uh, questions for the gentleman. He has been approved by the House, right? Yes. Approved by the House, no? Wala namang umangal sa sa lower house, right? Opo, opo. Aha. At si, uh, si uh, Congressman Romualdez, tinulong ka rin, di ba? Oo. Opo. opo. Binigyan mo siya maraming chanelas? Wala. <laughs> Wala. Kasi yung mga chanelas, dala ko rin sa... Eh, si Corina eh, Sanchez, binigyan mo ng chanelas? Wala rin. <laughs> Wala Wala maraming binibigyan ng chanelas si Corina, di ba? Kaibigan ko yan eh. Oh, mabuti tayo yan. Nakakatuwa. <laughs> oh, na. pati, si, pati si Mayor Rebrode na matay palagi naka-chanela siya binibigyan mo ba siya ng chanelas? hindi ko kinala hindi mo nasa kinala okay anyway Chinese rin yun di ba? oo oh. may, may lahing Chinese sila si Rebrode oh. opo oh, oh, sige alright uh, ano ka tingin ko? Uh, do, do the uh, members of the government, uh, say the Department of Justice, do you have any comment, please? Uh, Director uh, Jazim Cruz? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, this is... Um, Acting Director Jazil Cruz of the DFA po, um, Office of Consular Affairs. Uh, DFA, in, sorry. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, for DFA, yeah. filling in po for Assistant Secretary Mangalile. Uh, yeah. For the DFA po, we would like to confirm um, the inputs given at the House level that the present petitioner does not appear in the visa lookout list of the department or um, Philippine passport records and as such, we interpose no objection uh, to his present application. 
Uh, however, Mr. Chair, we would also like to reiterate our manifestations um, at house level for Chinese um, applicants in particular. Um, the committee may wish to um, ascertain the applicant's awareness of the fact that China does not allow dual citizenship. And um, uh, although it is a private matter between the petitioner and the Chinese government. Do the Chinese give reciprocity? Are there any Filipinos that become Chinese um, citizens? To his Chinese citizenship, um, the committee may wish to inform him of uh, this fact. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. If the Chinese government gives us Filipino citizenship, our, our, our people? Like Sir Erickson Bacalino, are they Filipino citizens in China or no? I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Are our countrymen given Filipino citizenship if they apply in China? Uh, given Chinese citizenship, sir, or Filipino Filip citizens in China, are they given the privilege of citizenship in China? Uh, for the Philippine side, sir, we allow dual citizenship, but uh, the Chinese That's government. Not citizenship. Sir. Let's say a Filipino like you, you want to apply for Chinese citizenship because you love China. Would they give you citizenship? Um, we have to confirm that, po, um, Mr. Chair. But on the side of... Yes, I, um, suggest you, I suggest you confirm it right away at this minute. Maybe you should ask some of your colleagues in the Department of Foreign Affairs whether they give Filipinos uh, the right to uh, to apply for Chinese citizenship. I have several friends that are Edison already now. I don't think they've been given Filipino citizenship yet. Or for that matter, our current ambassador... Uh, Stayed in China for a long time, but he never got Filipino citizenship. Or Jaime Flor Cruz, they never got Filipino citizenship. Am I making myself clear, sir? Yes, Mr. Chair. And can you please find out? Make a call, make uh, some calls. I know that Cordelia, so. my staff, is here. Maybe I can ask him. Go ahead. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk to the next uh, panel. Based on my experience, no, sir. Department of Justice. Funded for ma'am. Melvin. Hello. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, this is State Council Tala from the DOG. Um, we would also like to reiterate our position before during the hearing at the House that we interpose no objection to the grant of citizenship to Mr. Liang Si Wu, provided that he has no derogatory record and we already checked with uh, with the National Prosecution Service at the department, and he has no record on file there. So um, if he has no derogatory record with the other relevant agencies, we interpose no objection, sir. All right. Thank you. What about the others? How about Commissioner of Immigration? Uh, Honorable Chairman, please be informed that uh, Mr. Wu Liang Si, born on 22 September 1974, does not appear in the Bureau's HDO block list, watch list, alert list, and look out bulletin as of this date, sir. All right. And now we have uh, from the uh, NICA. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, record check showed that there is no derogatory information found on Mr. Wu Liang C. And so we interpose no objection on the grant of Filipino citizenship to the said applicant, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Kubin. Thank you. And who else? Thank you, sir. My assistant here, yes, sir. What about the NBI? Attorney Valdero Ignacio. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Chair, for now, uh, we are conducting record checks on Mr. Uh, uh, 
Mr. Wu Liang Shi to determine if there are derogatory records appearing on his name, sir. So for now, sir, uh, we are reserving our comments uh, on his naturalization. How can you do that? I think he, applied, he applied in the lower house. He already opened him there. Yes, Your Honor, we are conducting, we are double checking, Your Honor, to determine if there is really none. Considering, sir, that um, Chinese surnames and are usually common, Your Honor, um, so that uh, there would be no, no other concerns now. here. Let us check now. You already, we, you know, we're not going to take this up unless you okay it in the lower house. Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, find out now from your office. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. You know, you cannot do that here to us. You, have, you approve it in the lower house. But that in Dito, you're going to have second thoughts. So We're just doing this as a matter of uh, respect for your office. You heard, you heard your other colleagues. As I've been able to call this, uh, like we reiterated in the house, there was no uh, derogatory record. Is there any derogatory record for this uh, gentleman? No, none whatsoever for Mr. Chair. All right. Okay. Uh, Senator Zubiri, do you have any motion? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I move that the application of Mr. Wu Liang Zi be approved on committee level and referred to the plenary. There's no objection. Uh, the same is approved. Uh, the uh, papers of uh, Mr. Wu Liang Zi will not be forwarded to the plenary for discussion there in the plenary and approval. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I would like to uh, beg the pardon of the committee. I'd like to have a recess uh, to uh, take a drink of water. All right, thank you. Session is suspended for uh, uh, three minutes. Thank you.
with apologies to all the people in the panel, I was going to suspend it, but uh, that was revealed to one by Senator Subiri because he's, uh, he wants us to finish this so that uh, all these people who are waiting citizenship can be approved. Uh, not necessarily secure that they're going to get it, but at least we'll go hear them now so that uh, we can get it done. Uh, we have an open mind here. All right. So that's the next uh, part of the hearing is Mr. Uh, who's this? Uh, Zibin Liang. Good afternoon, Chair Mr. Chairman. Zibin Liang, are you there? Yes, I'm here. You have an accent. Are you from the Crown Colony? Uh, actually, I'm from Hong Kong. I'm a Hong Kong national. <laughs> yeah, they used to call it as the Crown Colony. <laughs> right? Now that the British are not there now, it is the what? Uh, it is part of SAR, right? Mm -hmm. And you are from Anhui province? Where is that? Is that south of China, Beijing or north or what? Uh, Anhui province, actually, is in the middle of the China. Actually, I was born there. And later, I, I with my family, we all... Let me go, um, move to Hong Kong. Uh, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. All right. And you're, you're not married, are you? Uh, I'm still single. All right. And how long have you been in the Philippines? Oh, yeah. So I have been here uh, about four, four years. So actually, uh, I got my bachelor, bachelor degree and my MBA degree from the USA. After receiving my MBA degree in the USA, I immediately went to Philippines. Before we go on, uh, again, I, I chastise uh, the secretary of the committee. You do your, uh, your duty, please. Uh, yes, Mr. You Chairman. You can interrupt me and say, sir, we have not put the witness under oath. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, kindly raise your right hand, Mr. Chapin Liang. Mr. Mr. Liang, raise your hand. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Prisoner. Uh, all right, you're single, and your address in the Philippines is where? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm living in Paranaque. And uh, what, the, uh, what the address? Uh, sorry, sir. What is your address? Yes, Mr. Uh, uh, it's it, uh, Pacific Mr. Avenue. Oh, uh, just so, Mr. 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 What can I do for you, Mr. Subiri? Uh, could we give an opening statement as well for the gentleman, Mr. Chairman? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Short, two paragraphs as well. Course, Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Chairman, uh, my friend, Mr. Liang, is a Hong Kong national with numerous business investments in the Philippines. His company, Tianyi Capital Limited, has 40% ownership in Golden TW Realty and Development Corporation. It's a Philippine company with a paid-up capital amounting to over 1.6 billion pesos with various properties in Tagay Tang and Boracay, as well as several other business ventures in the country. He's serving, he's currently serving as the only director in uh, uh, Tianyi Capital Limited. Mr. Liang <clears throat> completed his degree in finance in Indiana University at Kelly School Indiana, of Business in Indiana. Indiana, USA. Indiana, yes, sir. And then he pursued his graduate studies in business and finance, completing a master in business administration degree at the George Washington University. School of Business in Washington, D.C., USA. Aside from his business engagements, Mr. Liang is also deeply involved in philanthropic work for the country. And throughout the years, he has helped several Filipinos in the need of assistance and extended financial aid to victims of Typhoon Yolanda and helped the displaced workers in Marawi City through the Bakwit Village Phase Two project located in uh, Lano del Sur. The Bakwit Village Phase Two project consists of 130 housing units 20 livelihood stalls and two educational buildings, and the project was completed in 2019. And Mr. Liang continues to support it by paying for the community utilities to this day. Mr. Liang also has an ex extended assistance to various local governments, especially during the time of pandemic, helping uh, particularly the city of Paranaque, where he currently resides, as well as other neighboring cities as Makati, Munting Lupa, and other cities. Furthermore, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Liang has been a longtime supporter and donor of Batang Munti Foundation, a non-government organization that helps indigent children out of school youth in Munting Lupa. So uh, the gentleman has uh, extensive uh, business of, uh, establishments here in the Philippines, and his charitable work show that uh, he loves the Filipinos, uh, Mr. Chairman. So yun na po, marami salamat po, my dear colleagues.
Uh, I'm really having a hard time with my connections here and my. I was trying to look at the map of uh, Sweezy uh, just for my own personal gratification. Um, now, uh, you have extensive businesses in the Philippines. Is that the impression that you want to make here? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. You have extensive businesses in the Philippines. That is what Senator Sibiri has stated. Yes, yes, I have the business uh, in Philippines here. I'm holding about 40% of the shares, and the company is called the Golden GW Realty and Developer Corporation. The company has a paid off capital of about 6 billion pesos. And uh, we are holding, uh, the company is holding the properties in Baragay and Tagatai. Uh, yes. I uh, just want to know, um, you went to uh, Kelly School of Business in Indiana University. It's the Hoosier State, right? Yes, professor. Oh, That's where Larry Bird went to school? To school? Uh, yes, I think so. And also, I think the... I think I think the the American the vice president he's also from the from the Indiana like the Mike Pons. Who's this? Uh, Mike Pons, the ex vice president, also from Indiana. Ex wife of the president uh, of the USA. Of the USA. Indiana is a Indiana is a state uh, close to Illinois. I know, I know, I know. Where Indiana is it's the Hoosier state. Yes. Right, and uh, you're saying the wife of the former uh, uh, the uh, vice president is that went to Indiana? Uh, no, actually, the vice president of the of the U.S. the ex vice president also from Indiana. Which one is that? The Pons, Mr. Pons. You mean the vice president, Mr. Trump? Uh, uh no, actually, the vice uh, vice president. Vice President of the USA in 2016. Right, okay. <laughs> Sorry about the confusion. You went to George Washington University as well. Yes. That's in Washington, and you took up a uh, Master's of Business Administration. Did you finish these courses? Yes, uh, I finished it. It's a two years, uh, two years degree. And uh, you've run with it ever since. Uh, and. Uh, uh, from from graduating from uh, an MBA in Washington, George Washington University, where did you go? Uh, actually, so after graduate from the George Washington in 2019, I just just went to the Philippines immediately. Oh, you went to the Philippines immediately? Yes, because, because I, have, uh, I have a lot of like, Filipino friends here. So I have been contacting them for a long time, and they also invite me to the Philippines and I uh, have I have wanted to stay in the Philippines for a long time. So that's why after receiving my degree, I just came to the Philippines immediately. All right. And uh, uh, what did you do the moment you arrived in the Philippines? Did you bring some money with you? <laughs> uh, you have a lot of money. Uh, actually, you know, the, because the the COVID right now, so I'm sure I'm, I just follow what the like the health department the restriction restrictions and also i mean if the if the for example the restrictions lift as i may go some places to see it's the beauty of the philippines islands and also i'm hoping if i can if i can find my true love here in philippines Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding your English. Uh, so, what was your first investment in the Philippines then? So, actually, uh, my first investment in the Philippines is about the Tagaytay project. So, actually, uh, Tagaytay is a uh, we, my partner and I invest in the Tagaytay, which has about uh, um, 20, 23 hectares. And the, and, the, and the project is finished in Tagaytay? Uh, so the project is close to the picnic growth. So, and it's also completed, it's a completed project. How many condominiums did you build there? So actually, uh, right now we are in the investing stage. So we only have the, we just started to build a, a small property over there. 
because I plan to move to there at the end of the year. Nothing is built there yet. So it have, haven't have started yet, but we plan to do so by the, by the next year. So what are your business exposures here? So actually, uh, my business exposure is here is uh, right now it's still, still, still in the investment stage. And right now for the small property, we already already have more than 200 workers here. And we plan about the, we plan by the next year, we're going to start developing the Barake and the Tagate project. And we plan to hire about at least 5,000 Filipino workers, hope to provide more job opportunities for them and in increase the revenue for the government. And has the construction started? Uh, not yet. Right now, we are actually contacting with the de designer to talk about the design of the project. For the Brake project, actually, you know, we want to do, want to make the want to build a resort in Brake, and uh, we want to make it as a biz, biz, like business card for the Brake to attract like the international tourists to come to the Philippine Islands to show them the beauty of the Philippine Islands. You want to put a business center there? Uh, uh, I want to put a res I want to build a resort over there. Resort. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so these are what you call inchoate. 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 Still in expectancy. All these projects are in expectancy. Uh, actually, we are right now is already in the design stage. So for sure, because you you because of COVID, we definitely going to start to develop in, the, in these two years. But you have a source of income, right? What is your source of income at the moment? Yes. So actually, uh, so I have been doing in the finance industry and uh, my parents, they're also in the finance industry for, my parents have been the, in the finance industry for about 30 years. And so, they're in China, aren't they? Your parents are in China? No, actually, my, my father is here in Philippines now. Is he a Filipino already? No, actually, he's holding a SRV visa, the retirement visa, and he's staying here with me. Oh, so you're living in the same place? Yes. Yes. Uh, now, uh, you have built, uh, you could be given contributions to uh, victims of Yolanda. Where specifically in Yolanda? I think, uh, I think we... Actually, we donated, I think, a few years ago. Actually, my partner with my Filipino partner helps me a lot about the donations because he's uh, really familiar with everything about the Yolanda and about the Marawi. So actually, here, I really appreciate, appreciate my, my partner is doing everything for me. And the Yolanda actually is in the Tacloban, Tacloban area. Yeah, how many houses did you build there? If you built anything, did you build anything there? Uh, because the Red Cross, I'm I, I'm the chairman of the Red Cross, and we built thirty thousand houses in Yolanda, in Tacloban alone, in Leyte. Not to mention Cebu, where we had nine thousand, or uh, Samar, we had nine thousand, and uh, Iloilo nine thousand, and going all the way to Palawan. How many did you build there in? Uh, so, uh, actually, so like I support more about the Marawi city area and about the donation. Three thousand in Marawi. Uh, about like, one thirty house units. Yeah. One thirty house units in Marawi city. One hundred thirty housing units, right? Yes. And then you provided livelihood. Yes. And two educational buildings. Yes. Do you know where you put them there? Uh. Yeah, uh, I'm not know know the exactly the location, but actually my Filipino partners actually they please help me to do a lot to doing the all the like the building constructions and I really here I really appreciate my partner what my partner did for me. Uh, tell me, why do you want to be a Filipino? Especially uh -huh. at this stage where China is beginning to be a great power? So I think the reason I want to be a uh, Filipino is because uh, people here are friendly, optimistic, hardworking, and really have uh, really advanced English skills. 
So I have no communication barrier with them. And also enjoy the Filipino food here, like Senegal, Turan, Lechon. So I'm learning Tagalog right now. Uh, Philippines just make me feel like home, and I really want to become part of the group. Also, uh, Philippines, you know, has a lot of beautiful islands, beaches, and that really unique in the world. So I want to live in this beautiful country with more than about uh, 7,600 islands for the rest of my life. Uh, that's why we plan want to build a resort in Boragi and Tagate over the next few years to attract more international tourists to show how beautiful the Philippine islands are. Also, becoming a Filipino will also help me to contribute more to the society and the country. We plan to start developing the resort by the next year. So we want to hire at least 5,000 Filipinos when it's fully operational to provide more job opportunities for our citizens. And also I will do my best, continue to do the best to provide the financial and professional support for our Filipino people, organization, and the government. Uh, Ronald says, uh, I want to see something more realistic. Like I, I saw Senator Lapid uh, smiled, uh, you know, hotly when you said uh, uh, you were learning to eat lechon and other uh, Filipino food. Is he the one teaching you? Because you know he's a He's a good connoisseur of uh, food, good food, especially Kapangpangan food. Has he made you eat uh, frog shit? <laughs> actually, uh, oh, actually, a lot of my Filipino friends, they, they just, uh, when I first arrived here, they just uh, let me to try all the different foods, like Duron, Lechon. I mean, like in Hong Kong, we also have the roasted pig, but the Philippine style is a little bit different. So... That's why, like in Hong Kong, like those pig is also one of my favorite. So that's why, like the choice, but also one of my favorite food here in in Philippines. And is your mother here also in the Philippines? Uh, no, my father, uh, my mother is in Singapore right now because he has she has business in Singapore. Mm -hmm. So uh, do a lot of the Chinese go to Singapore? I know there's a lot of the Chinese go to Singapore lately. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite popular right now, Singapore. I think it's because uh, because of my two younger sisters. Uh, my two younger sister, one of my young, younger sister, is studying the Singapore American School. So that's why my mom is 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 there to stay with my younger sister. Now you took up a master's in business administration in George Washington. Yes. You attended the School of Business in Indiana University. Mm-hmm. What are you not putting? Are you going to put that to good use? Uh, certainly, that caliber, those caliber schools are not uh, are not uh, ordinary. They're extraordinary. Although George Washington is more famous for for government, but yes, this is administration there. Uh, actually, uh, have you grown all your life mostly in uh, Western countries like the United States and now the Philippines? I th uh, so I have I have staying so I spent my college year for five years in the U U.S. as uh, in Indiana and I, s I also stayed spent two years in George Washington D.C. Uh, D.C. I know is a city like uh, for the government but also we can also we have chance to meet a lot of people like from the World Bank or if the if the president for, for example if the French president come to visit the White House. Uh, we also have time to come to our school to give us a guest speech. So um, I know like the George Washington is more famous for the government, but there also has a lot of opportunity to do for the business. Yeah. So uh, what do you think? You can contribute. Sorry, go ahead, uh, Mix. Go ahead, Senator Asubiri. I know this. I know this, Chairman. No, just, just there's a lot of uh, outflux of Hong Kong nationals. Is it maybe because of the clampdown of the local government on democracy? Uh, of course, those who believe in democracy, who believe in free capitalism, and all that. I, I've noticed that, Chairman. No, because there are applications for us for citizenship, and not only through Congress, but also through uh, the Bureau of Immigration, through the judiciary side. 
I really believe it's also because of, of uh, the clamp down there. And uh, for the record, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, England and Great Britain, Canada has opened their doors actually uh, to Hong Kong nationals. So just for the record, I wanted to put that because I've noticed a lot of Hong Kong nationals try to, I guess, seek better lives elsewhere. Um, for the record, Mr. Chairman. Well, there's a diaspora of Chinese all over in Canada, in Europe, uh, certainly. Uh, and perhaps uh, that's been an ongoing thing since uh, even in the United States, when they built the railroad, it was the Chinese who built them. And they were highly, highly discriminated. I mean, those were really, really bad treatment of the Chinese in America. Uh, and then up to the, a certain extent, uh, uh, during the uh, Civil War in China, in when we were uh, uh, the, the, the Wong sisters, if I'm not mistaken, uh, one of them married a very big banker. One of them was the wife of General Lissimo Chiang Kai-shek. Do you remember their names, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Jubin? Uh, Jubin? Uh, okay. Uh, I couldn't uh, memorize, uh, memorize the name, name exactly. But I do know, but I do it's know right now. Two sisters and a brother that uh, were able to uh, capitalize on their friendships with America. And uh, for a long time, they lived in the United States. Uh, Adam Chang uh, was one of them. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, one of them married and a very big capitalist in America. And, uh, you know, is this happening again in uh, China? Uh, I, I, I don't want to see and sound naive, but... Uh, you know what happened to Jack Ma? Uh, he got very big, and he didn't conform to American, uh, to uh, Chinese-style capitalism, uh, which means that uh, I don't know if I'm being unfair to Xi Jinping. If you go to be bigger than Xi Jinping, then you're placed into exterior darkness. Is that what happened to Jack Ma? Uh, right now, uh, right now I know like Jack, Jack Ma is not really. On the internet, he's really keep a low profile right now. So, and uh, actually, I haven't been to the China for a lot of years. Most of the time, actually, I'm in Philippines, Philippines now. So, I don't know exactly what happened in China, besides China. But I do know actually the like the Jack Ma, all the big corporations like in China, their CEO right now is keeping a low profile right now. I think because the I think the the financial regulations or the internet regulations is strict stricter and it's heavier in China right now. Well, it's getting to be difficult because Samsung seems to be moving out from China. They closed down their company there. Do you know where they closed it down? Right in the middle of China. Uh, yes, so I. Kind of people will lose their jobs and they're going elsewhere. Yeah, I can see a lot of like the actually like U.S. corporations or international corporations, they are moving out to the China in these two years. I guess one of the reasons, maybe because they think the, because right now the U.S. and China extension, like the relationship is a little bit in tension right now. So the political risk is a little bit high. So that's why they decide to move to someplace else. Well, that's precisely why these questions are being propounded by Senate Luis really, because uh, we're seeing a heightening of tension uh, within the U.S. and China and all their neighbors out here. So why would you want to be a Filipino citizen and renounce your Chinese citizenship when you come down here? Uh, so, uh, you know, you'll have to get a permission from us if you're going to have double citizenship in China. I don't think uh, I would like to favor that situation, especially with our problems with China. Would you, are you prepared to renounce the Chinese citizenship and be a Filipino all the way? Uh, yes, I'm ready to uh, become a Filipino because here people, I mean, the people all I meet, they are just friendly, nice. They are, I mean, they welcome you. Like, it's just make me feel like home. Uh, like, when I met them or go to their home, they just treat you as a part of the family. So that's why I really want to become the Filipino and I feel like I belong to the belong to the part of this group yeah uh, well I, I don't want to make this a political discussion because it has got to be something that is happening 
uh, you know, uh, in China, the Uyghurs are being uh, uh, discriminated at and having a hard time. There's another billionaire apart from Jack Ma. Uh, a lady stayed behind and the husband is in London now. And I think he came out with the book. Are you familiar with that guy? I think his name is Chow or something. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I'm not familiar with that person. The next pose uh, that he made uh, on uh, Xi Jinping, uh, I saw that in Australian television about a couple of months ago, and I saw it again recently. And they're very, very well positioned in China, but they're also leaving China. At least he has, the man has, right? Is that the case with you? Are you afraid of China as a future? Or do you think that repression will grow in China? Or do you think that it's going to be difficult? Um, not really. Actually, I spend, actually spend my college, college life and I spend my MB life in the U.S. So I think most of the time I'm staying with the Western culture. And the Philippines is such a special place because it's mixed with the Western culture and Asia culture together. That's why I feel like when I meet a lot, lot of Filipino people, I feel like, okay, we have so much in common. Like, everything, we, like, I have a lot to talk about. That's why I feel like I want to be a Filipino. It doesn't, it doesn't relate to what about the China or something. I haven't been to China for so many years. I've, that's just my personal lifestyle. I mean, I have been in the Western culture for like more than more than eight years. Um, I mean, so I'm getting used to the Western culture and the Philippines is a, such a unique place. So that's why I want to stay here in the Philippines. Well, I'll make no mistake about it. I, uh, I, uh, I like the Chinese people. I, I, I admire the Chinese people. That's why uh, with your credentials, I like, uh, I'd like to see somebody like you become a Filipino citizen personally uh, at first glance, but just want to make sure that you realize that the future doesn't occur very well because uh, there's definitely going to be a clash of civilizations within the Chinese and the American civilization, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Especially now that uh, uh, they're making the reality of the China Sea happen, uh, and that's going about to have tensions. Especially now that you have guys like Ren Xingqiang, a retired real estate tycoon with close ties to senior Chinese officials disappeared in March after he uh, made a, sca a scathing essay that while criticizing Xi Jinping's response to the coronavirus epidemic. So uh, more and more, the Chinese are very repressive. The government, I've always been quoted as, I like the Chinese people, I admire them, but I do not uh, accept the Chinese government, uh, especially in in this Belt and Road uh, project, a lot of people are getting into the death trap. I don't have enough to make a conclusion that there is indeed a death trap, but certainly knowing that Sri Lanka has lost their airport or, uh, or their hotel or whatever, uh, there seems to be a problem in that, in that regard. So I want to make sure that you're coming in with the right reasons for our country. Uh, mm -hmm. You're young, and uh, I think it's important that, uh, how old are you now? Uh, this year I will be 31. 31, that's pretty young. It's a good time to start a new life in the Philippines. And if you look at America, many of the people who went to America were uneducated, but they made their fortunes in America when they were young. Some of them uneducated, but they made very, very, they made good, very, very well. And, and, and in the, uh, for example, uh, uh, you're like uh, Jack Ma who studied in America and then went back to China and made money in China. Would that be correct? Uh, actually, Jack Ma, he, he didn't go to study, but he's the, like the English teacher in China. Yeah, yeah but he, he, he was educated also in America, wasn't he? I mean, I, but he actually, the, it's a commonsensical type of business and uh, made Alibaba and uh, made it rich, right? Yes, uh, actually, he listed the Alibaba in the, like the New York stock market, U.S. stock market. That's why... Make him, make him like rich, but he's gone from the scene right now. He's missing. Uh, what do you uh, think about that? I'm sorry, what? What do you think about that? I think about Jack Ma. He's very, very big, like Jack Ma. There seems to be a problem right away. 
Uh, I think they are. Yeah, I know him personally. I brought him to President Duterte when I was still friends with President Duterte. Okay, so actually, the Jack Ma, I think he's doing the right now. He's doing the business. Most of his business actually is in mainland China. So because of the recent update, the regulations in China. So that's why I think his business suffer suffered suffered a lot. Uh, but I am different because uh, so I don't have any business in mainland China. Uh, right now, I'm so I'm only having the property real estate business in the Philippines. So that's why you know that's why I want to be a Filipino. It's because like the one of the one of the great benefits for the Filipinos is Filipino they can enjoy the the greatness of the democracy, but. Uh, okay. In the China, actually, so in China, I mean, the policy could change at any time. So I think that's the one of the ad advantage to, you know, for okay. the uh, Thank you very much. I, I think I've heard enough. And uh, I don't I wonder if Senator Lapid does a question. If not, uh, Senator Sibiri, uh, would you like to make your... Uh, Usual moves, after all, you sponsored this gentleman here. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. As I said earlier, Senator Lapid, going to ask a question yes. about uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, 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 Let's get the best and the brightest story leaving Hong Kong, particularly on this issue of the clampdown of businessmen there. And, you know, that would be a big help for us here in the Philippines. Uh, I think uh, they can put their businesses here. Uh, we're trying to make an ease of doing business for all these people. And I really, really welcome and I'm happy that uh, Derek has chosen the Philippines as his home. Hopefully his future wife is Filipina and the Filipina that can take care of him. I know a lot of Chinese friends who married Filipinas and they're very happy. And, uh, and, you know, the Filipinas are the best wives. You can ask me and my Ninong, uh, uh, Ninong Gordon, because our wives are the best. So, you lama po, I move that we approve uh, on the committee level uh, for plenary the application of Mr. Derek uh, Liang uh, for uh, citizenship. Marami salamat po, Chairman. Thank you What do they so call much. you, Derek? Uh, Mr. Zibin, what do they call you, Derek? Uh, actually, it's the name when I went to the college. Uh, one yeah. of my my friends they just gave me the name, Derek. So I just use it. <laughs> yeah, there's an actor with the name of John Derek. Uh, <laughs> in the Ten Commandments, he was uh, Joshua. Uh, he uh, made the uh, walls of Jericho collapse, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, uh, motion has been. Uh, uh, have we gotten all uh, the approval from the? Uh, Government uh, representatives here, uh, can I get quickly? Uh, Justice Department, please, your comments. No objection, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, who is that? Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is uh, State Council Alder and Luna uh, from uh, Mr. the Department of Justice. Um, yeah. Um, no uh, Mr. Chair, similar to the. Sorry, Mr. Chair. You have no objections. After all, you sound like Chinese. your name sounds like Chinese, Mr. Lu. No. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair, uh, provided that his name does not appear in the derogatory database of uh, Bureau of Immigration and uh, NBA, Mr. Chair. All right. Who's next? Uh, immigration. I know that immigration is chafing right now because uh, they have to. Uh, I have another hearing uh, after this. I'm really in a rush. Uh, uh, Jimmy Morante, do you have any objection? Uh, no objection on the part of the Bureau of Immigration, sir. Uh, Sibin Liang, born on 15 May 1992, does not appear in the Bureau's HDO blacklist, watch list, alert list, and lookout bulletin as of this day. Thank you. And the Department of Foreign Affairs? DFA? DFA interposes no objection. Uh, petitioner not being in the department's visa lookout list or Philippine passport records, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So no objection as well. 
And uh, Danica? No objection, Mr. Chair, on the grant of uh, Filipino citizenship from Mr. Sibin Yang. Yes, all right. And then who else? Uh, OSG? Office of Senator Gordon, and the Office of Solicitor General. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. The OSG interposes no objection to the petition. Thank you, Manikar. Thank you. And then who else? Lana? The National Bureau of Investigation. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, the NBA interposes no objection to the uh, petition of uh, Mr. Derek Liang for naturalization. Can you state your name, please? I don't have your name. Attorney Valder Ignacio, your Mr. Chair. Valder Curly Ignacio. Valder Derek. Also Derek, Mr. Uh, Chair. Your name was Curly because of your hair. <laughs> kulot, kulot. <laughs> All right. There being no objection and the motion has been done and carried without any objection, the Chair now orders the uh, submit the Secretary to submit the records of Mr. Derek. Uh, uh, Zibin Liang uh, to the plenary uh, with the compliments of Senator Zubiri and Senator Lapid. Thank you very much and congratulations, Mr. Derek. Be a good citizen now. Okay, marami salama po. Oh, sige. Buti naman, nagsasalita ka lang ng Tagalog. Sige. Okay, thank you. Salamat, Chairman. Marami salamat. Chairman, if you don't mind, I have to change because I have to rush to the Senate. Uh, to uh, start the session, but I, in, I super, I fully support the immigration bills. I was the author of that. I'm mean, actually the author of that of several congresses, and we almost passed it when it was uh, Nonoy Libanan that was the head of the BI. Unfortunately, na politika yon when the last day it was supposed to be ratified in the Congress, hindi na ratify because of uh, a change in leadership. Na kaaway away sila dun. So I'm fully supportive of the BI measure, Mr. Chairman. Can you just, I, I need your help here because I, there's nobody else and uh, you and Dito, can you just say very quickly lang. Uh, Opo. Lang ito, si Lin Lin Guo. Can you bring him over, Lin Lin Guo? Uh, yes. Okay, yes, 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 Senator. Are you, Ms. Lin, are you a girl? Yes, yes. Where are you? In the house, in my house. I know you're in your house. Can you please put your video in? Uh, in? I'm in the PGC house. I know, Mr. but Chairman, put your video for uh, Mr. Chairman. May yeah. I just make a May I just make a uh, omnibus manifestation? If there are no objections to her later on, of course, after your line of questioning, then uh, I will also make the motion that I did for the others. I just have to really leave uh, Nino because if I'm late, they cannot start session. So I just want to give you a hard time. <laughs> thank you po, thank you po, Chairman. Thank you po, God bless you. Puti ka pa nakapag-lunch ako, hindi pa at breakfast. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Lin Lin, take a uh, raise your hand and uh, administer the oath, Mr. Secretary. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Ms. Kuo Lin Lin? Yes. Can you turn on your video, please? I have to see you. Yeah. Have you. Thank you. Maybe they cannot see you. Wait. No, like this. Why do you come running? Why do you go to Yeah. There you go. All right. Uh, yeah. Miss Lin Lin Go, you want to be a Filipino citizen. Why? Uh, be because I, uh, yes, Senator, because I come Philippine, I arrived here is by 2005, and I stay here already 15 years. I get my education for um, Master for Business of Administration, also finished study by Rockville Ateneo. Where? Where did you go to school? Uh, Rockville Ateneo. Ateneo? Yes. Which school? A college. Master degree. MBA. MBA. Master for Business Administration. All right. All right. And uh, you passed it? You made your thesis? Uh, big pardon? You passed it? You have a degree? You finished yeah, I finished all the, all the course. All the course. 
Yeah, you have a diploma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you speak Tagalog? Uh, uh, I can't understand that Tagalog, but I speak Kundila. Because even in my house, I, I with my husband, baby, we talking English. But my husband, my husband and baby always fail to be no. Where is your husband? Uh, my husband is here. All right, is he Filipino? Yeah, Filipino. Yeah. I understand he's a policeman. Uh, yes, yes I'm, I'm already retired, Senator. Retired, okay, it's okay. See, we, we do our homework here. So is she taking care of you, Miss Lin Lin? <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Uh, it's very big. Very good. What did you say? Uh, very good care of my family. Okay. How many children do you have? One. Only one. Three years. You know, a Chinese lady coming here and marrying a Filipino, a policeman at that. You ask him if he has several wives. Uh, no, <laughs> you, you have many. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Uh, and where are you from in China, Miss Lin Lin? I'm from Jilin province, uh, the, the north area. Jilin, can I see the map? Yeah, Jilin province, north area. Jilin is north? Yeah, it's north. Near the Russian. Near the Russian. Near the Russian. Russia. Yeah, it's so cold. So cold there. That's why you want to be here. So hot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, because uh, I, I, I like. Uh, what does it say here in your application for you're single? Yeah, when I come here, I'm single, only student. But are you married? Are you legally married? Uh, not yet in the paper. Uh, no paper. Yeah, but we are already ten years. Yeah. All right. So what you call a common law relationship, right? And yeah. You live here. Not to be that low best hours. House. Yeah, yeah, it's all the house. But now it's you're married to Erwin Larenaria Larse, Filipino, senior police officer retired. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay, and what is your source of livelihood here? Uh, when I arrived here, the first first three years, I just only study, and after study, I just doing for the the first business for me is consultancy. So I, uh, my consultancy is like I bring many Chinese students also study here, education here. And after study, they go back to China. Someone, they work also in here, Philippines. And then my second business, I, uh, I doing is for selling many condominiums in the Philippines also, maybe around the 500 units. Always, I bring many uh, China uh, friends, uh, businessmen, they, they investment here. Many investors come to Philippines. It's around the, like 250 million I selling Lahat for the Philippine condominium. So you invested in condominiums here? Yes, yes. How many condominiums do you have? Uh, 500, I, I sell in 500 units. You have 500 units, you own it? No, no, no. I selling. I selling. Listen, listen. Are you selling? Yes. How many condominiums do you own? My, I, I, my own condominium, I have four. You have how many? Four, four. Four? Yes. Four condominium units? Yes. And how can you live in four when you only have one uh, husband? No, the, the three is for investment. Uh, so they're being rented out? Yeah, for leasing, for investment. And uh, uh, do you have any other businesses here? Uh, also the business for uh, hydro. Hydro? Hydro? Yes. Water? Yeah, in yes, Surigao. Surigao? Yeah, but not yet really starting the operation. We still processing paper because of COVID time uh, is delayed. It's pandemic time, so everything is delayed. Hopefully, if in case this year we can start it. What do you mean, hydro? Are you going to build a dam? Yes. Yes, yes. Where Nine, can go? Nine megawatts. Nine megawatts. Nine megawatts? Yes. Have you gotten the permit from the government? 
Not yet, very difficult. Not yet, very difficult. You, you, you tell your husband, the policeman, that retired to stop talking to me. I'm not talking to him. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, what is green energy in over the Philippines? The water, hydro. Oh, that's the hydro. Yes, from the water. And how did you make all this money? A uh, big pardon. How did you make all this money? I just uh, looking for investment, invest, investment, and then partner together. No, but you made a lot so, of money. Did you make a lot of money in Pogo? Tell the truth. I'm not a Pogo operator. Uh, I'm not a Pogo operator. Give my call on the attention of uh, the secretary. Did you put her under oath? A uh, big pardon. Yes, yes, we did, Mr. Chairman. We did. All right. So you don't operate the Bogo? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. And the House Committee Secretary, they disclosed that you're a Bogo. Not that there's something wrong, because it, it was allowed legally here by the government, and I, I don't approve of it, but it was allowed. So you're not doing violating any law. So do not deny it. If you were a Bogo operator, i give you one more chance. Do you have anything to do with Bogo? No, I didn't do the Pogo business. So how did you make all this money? You have about, and I'll be frank, you have about 108 million pesos I, in a certain bank here. I buy in and selling. I, the, the many condominiums I selling, we who have broker. Who do you sell to? Pogo operators? No, my income is mostly from... I I bring the Chinese student to come here study, so they give me the um, the consultant space, and I also selling many condominium units in Philippines, and I get broker face. All right. And uh, where did you say you came from? Near Russia? Yeah, Jilin province. Jilin, I look at the map; it's far away from Russia. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in China, the map is the in the north area. Uh, you're near Vladivostok? Where are you near? Near um, North Korean. Yeah. North Korean. Yeah, you're near North Korea, but you're also near Vladivostok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's right. Moscow. Right. So how did you get here? So far away? Because I come here study. The first Wait, one study here. The first time is also I come here for Bragai for travel. And oh. we, when I come here for Bragai travel, I feel I it, 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 it be very nice. Because oh. I come here for Bragai travel in two thousand five with my family. We we come here just only for travel. I stay I check in, in Bragai, the hotel. And I I love Philippines because it's the weather very nice. The people very nice also. And then in Brakai, the, the one hotel, the, the boss is Filipino. When we take breakfast, he tell me here have many good uh, university. So I just try to apply, study here in master. And I check here online the website that the Ateneo MBA is very famous. How is the dean? Uh, who is the dean of the Ateneo MBA program? A big pardon? The dean. My dean. Dean, uh, D-E-A-N. Yeah, he, my dean is very old already. He's already retired. He's already retired, not teaching class anymore. What's his name? I've, I've got the name of my dean. When did you go to Ateneo? 19, 2006. All right. And who are your classmates? My classmates, some they are mostly Filipino. Some yes. any any famous ones? No, they are it's only uh normal people. But you, most like, you're, you're the only one that got very rich. They all got poor, is that it? No, no, no. Some some they are also uh success in their life. It's like manager uh in the bank or manager in some international company. Yeah, and do you intend to go back to China someday? 
No, I don't have plan to go back to China. That's why I, I want to get the Filipino citizen because my baby, my my love, my husband are always here. My relationship, my friend, all around is in Philippines. What about your family there in China? Do you still have them? My parents is in China, but they are so old already. My parents is already 75 years old. My my mother, my father, some uh, just only like before pandemic, they just only once a year come here for for visit for me. And how old are you? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, is there anybody there, uh, uh, Mister Lapid? Do you have any questions, Tito? Uh, well, can you call Mr. Subiri? Uh, session is suspended. Feng Li, can you please uh, raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Yes, yes, I tell the truth. I cannot see you. Uh, that, that will not count because I do not see you raising your hand. What happened? Go on video. What's now? Uh, can we... Uh, okay. Okay. The okay. truth? Yes, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Yes, I, I swear I tell the truth. Thank you, sir. Mr. Frank B? Yes. Um, how do you know Mr. Pagel? Oh, before, huh, we are the fans of the boxing. All the Chinese uh, know Pagel is a very famous, you know, the boxing champion. And uh, we know, I know the... Here, it's the one sponsoring. How old are you? I'm 47 years old. 47. How long have you been in the Philippines? Uh, 22 years old. 22 years already, this year. And what do you do here in the Philippines? Uh, we are arriving in the Philippines year 1999. I study in the La Salle. La Salle? Yeah, MBA. Wrong school. Oh, uh, no, MBA. Master of the Business Administration. Oh, in the I'm from the Ateneo. Uh, I'm from Lasa. <laughs> Lasa. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Lasa is a good school. Then, then after that, uh, I work for the Senator Carlow in the Mexico for his for her translator. Almost, uh, I work for her almost 15 years. Then along the way, I'm doing the real estate business in the Philippines. We buy the land, we build the building, and we sell. All right, and. Uh... What are your properties here in the Philippines? Uh, we first the property we develop is in the Mandaluyong, uh, Marvillis, Mandaluyong, near the crossing of Edesa. You have a condominium. You live in Grove uh, Rockwell. Uh, yes, I live in the Grove Rockwell. And the second development I'm doing now in the Pasig, Misadas Avenue, around the three hectare land. We are under the under the development. It condominium. Are you in business with uh, Miss uh, Miss Guo? Yeah, because uh, when I arrived here, I also, uh, because at that time, I introduced him, introduced her to the Philippines to do the investment, especially in the hydro and the real estate business. He, she's also helped me to sell a lot of units. Marami kang Tagalog? Kandila, 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 Kandila. Kumas Naga. Tagalog, ikwento mo sa akin yung nalalaman mo sa Tagalog. Yeah, very, very small, because normally in the Philippines, uh, English is very good here. Uh, wherever you go, uh, we can use the English. Where are you from in China, Jiangsu? 
Yeah, Jiangsu Province, uh, Xuzhou City, near the Nanjing, near the Shanghai. Near Nanjing. Yeah, Nanjing. Yes, near Nanjing. How did you get to the Philippines, and why did you go to the Philippines? Uh, really, we come to Philippines for the study. For studying, and you went yes. to the Philippines. Is that what you're saying? Uh, beg your pardon, but senator. And you like the Philippines, and that's why you want to spend your life here. Yes, my my feeling is Philippines. The the people is nice. And also country here, the policy, the system, it good for the business, the you know development, and also this country they have the very the, you know good weather, and the good the tourism uh, resources here. Well, both of you were recommended by Senator Pacquiao, uh, and of course the House has already approved your citizenship. So more or less, I'm just asking the questions to make sure that your desire to become a Filipino is genuine, yes. and that you'll be a, you'll not be a, a burden to our country. Uh, but certainly, you know, the relations within China and the Philippines, especially on the West Philippine Sea, is not good. Now, what do you think of that? In fact, uh, you know, this year I'm 47 years old. I stay in the Philippines already 50% of my life already. In fact, I already feel the Philippines, my hometown already. You know, the 20 years, uh, among the first 20 years, I only stay in China around the 19 years. Three years I'm in the COVID before I come to the Philippines. For the Philippine Sea side, hopefully, in my mind, the uh, Philippines and China should be good relationship. No need to fight. <laughs> Just that uh, together develop. All right. Uh, well, uh, I'm trying to get in touch with Senator Sabiri. He's, uh, he's listening on radio, but I think he's on, uh, on his phone. But I want to make sure that uh, he uh, makes the motion uh, uh, so that uh, you can uh, bring it to the floor. Um, if you stay a while, a little bit more, I will go to the immigration uh, meeting uh, and uh, keep you there for a while until Mr. Subiri shows up. All right. Okay. In the matter of uh, the citizenship application of these two persons, uh, Mr. Feng and uh, Mr. Ms. Guo, I will hold it in abeyance until the uh, arrival of Senator Subiri. Uh, anyway, we have a quorum. That's the way we operate here. Once we start with the quorum, there is a quorum. So uh, let me just uh, hold your horses there. Stay there while I call the hearing on the Commission on Immigration and the Committee on Immigration to order. Are you ready, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Morente. Commissioner Morente, there is a, are you there? Come on, I'm in the Your Honor, no, I'm sorry, I just took a bathroom break. Can we proceed uh, with the hearing on the, your bill? Yes, sir. Why do you want the bill to be approved? Uh, pardon me, Your Honor. Hello, sir. Yes, go ahead. You're you're uh, overhauling the standards of the allowable immediate support staff for key officials of an agency, as provided in the or under the organization and staffing standards and guidelines of OSSG. Right. Sir, uh, I did not get the question, sir. I'm sorry. Well, you're in favor of the amendments being proposed here under the Commission on Immigration, right? Uh, particularly on what uh, provision, Your Honor? Well, you have a lot here. Uh, why don't I? Why don't I uh, suspend this hearing and? Uh, Hold the hearing tomorrow about uh, 11 o'clock so we can uh, tackle this. Uh, I don't have any more backup from the Senate, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, yes, sir. We'll go back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. I will suspend the hearing and make sure that you're uh, ready to uh, answer the questions tomorrow. I'm really very tired. I'm preparing for the session already. I don't think we can finish much. It's already quarter to three. So I will suspend the hearing. For the Commission on Immigration, I only called it so I can call 
and continue the meeting tomorrow at 11 yes, o'clock. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. We're clearly ready. I'm just trying to do you the uh, favor that uh, you want this bill along uh, with land so that we can do it uh, better. All right? Yes, uh, sir. Senator should be there already. All right. In the meantime, I, I will call back the uh, committee uh, on uh, immigration and the matter of the citizenship of Mr. Fang and Ms. Wu. Uh, Hmm. Session is suspended for a couple of minutes. I believe Senator Shabili is there uh, already. Yeah. Yeah. Senator Shabili has expressed uh, that he would like to. Uh... Can you just ask him to re enter? Yes, hello, Chairman. Uh, we have heard him, uh, the two uh, gentlemen recommended by Senator Pacquiao, uh, person rather, uh, Ms. Guo and uh, Ms. Mr. Feng. Uh, do you have any comments on there? I'm sure you read their profile, right? Senator Subiri, are you, um, are, are you moving to... Uh, I moved them to the plenary already. Pull in, pull in. Let me go through. It's just move, come on. What kind of going on there? All right. Uh, can you can you say that again, please? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, there been a motion to approve the applications of Mr. Go and Mr. Um, uh, Ms. Go and Mr. Feng. Uh, there are no objections. The same is approved, and the committee directs uh, uh, the secretary to send it to the uh, as soon as possible to the uh, uh, to the plenary. Thank you, Mr. Sabiri. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, having said that. Uh, uh, congratulations to both of you. I hope you become good citizens. Uh, and uh, there are no objections from the panel, right? Uh, Mr. Morente, you have no objections to them? From immigration? Uh, no objections, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to uh, inform you that Mr. Feng Li, born on 26 April 1974, and Ms. Uh, Lin Lin Gu, Born on 17 April 1987, 
does not appear in the Bureau's HDO blacklist, watch list, alert list, and lookout bulletin as of this day, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, can we have the uh, Nika? Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we interpose no objection to the grant of Filipino citizenship, both for Ms. Gulen Lin and Mr. Lin Pei. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, sir. No, no objection is noted. Go ahead, DOJ, is it? DOJ? Mr. Um, Chair, Mr. Chair, uh, take down to Alden Duna. Yes. Uh, we interpose no objection, Your Honor, to both applicants. All right. We're trying to uh, finish this because uh, this session will be I will be adjourning in about a week, so we're trying to speed up things. Go ahead, OSG. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the OSG does not interpose any objection to the two um, bills. Very well, uh, Carr, thank you. Who else? Uh, DFA? Melvin, DFA? DFA interposes no objections to the uh, petitions of Ms. Go, Ms. Go and Mr. Feng uh, for citizenship. Thank you. Thank you. And, and the NBI? Uh, Mr. Chair, in the absence of any declaratory record in their names, uh, this the Bureau does not uh, interpose any objection to the petition for naturalization. So, All right. Thank you. Mr. Chair, thank you. Nika has already been called. Uh, uh, let me just thank uh, all the uh, panelists, especially the people from the government, for their comments. We rely on you to make sure that the people don't have any derogatory records or that they're okay to be processed, and we thank you. Uh, on that note, I will, uh, I will, uh, uh, I will adjourn, uh, and, uh, Mr. Pakel, you want recommend? All right, uh, if that is uh, okay with you, we now uh, terminate the hearings for the uh, uh, prepare the committee report, Mr. Komsek, for all of them, right? Yes, Mr. Chairman. All right, let's submit it as soon as possible so we can get it done uh, on the floor. Uh, in the meantime, on the matter of the Committee on Immigration, uh, on, on the matter of the bill on the Committee on Immigration, the Justice Committee, We'll call a meeting tomorrow at 11 o'clock, and I hope that everybody will be ready to answer the questions. Is that okay, uh, Chairman Morente? Uh, it's okay, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, sir. Let's try to speed it up and uh, make it fast para makaabot tayo. Kundi, hindi tayo makakaabot. Yes, sir. Thank I'm you, sir. Very hard. I'm trying very hard. Believe you me. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Hindi na kasi tayo abot eh. Magigiling na kami. Magsa-session na kami. Thank you, and thank you all very much for your kindness. Lin Lin Go, thank you. Mr. Fanny, uh, Fanny, thank you. And God bless you, all of you. God bless the Republic of the Philippines. The session, session for the citizenship uh, agenda is over uh, uh, and uh, it's adjourned. And, but the session on the committee uh, that will handle the immigration bills, as already stated, will continue tomorrow at 11 o'clock. So ordered. Thank you very much.